Gives the ball to the fullback and he stops. with more than 70,000 fans to see number 10 Houston and the country's most explosive offense take on second-ranked Miami and the Hurricanes' amazing 38-game Orange Bowl winning streak. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mike Patrick, and welcome to Miami. Over the last eight years, the Hurricanes have become college football's most dominant program. They won more games than anybody else. But Houston knows how to win and dominate, too. The Cougars' run-and-shoot offense can rack up points at an amazing rate, and they are literally capable of destroying a defense. Houston going through its last-minute preparations in the locker room and ready to listen to their head coach, John Jenkins. Defensively, offense, get right in there and get tight. Let's go, go cool. in behind your position. Come on, go, cool. Go again, go, fellas, man. hey. Yes, sir, no, sir, to those officials. Yeah. All right. Okay, clean, clean battle all night long. Taunting, celebrations, none of that, none of that with Houston. Okay, hey, our battle's between the whistles. All right, great, great opportunity, man. Great. Super opportunity, everything we could ask for right here tonight. The whole, whole country, entire country's gonna see it. Come on. Every, hey, no Time regional to telecast. Guys, it's all, it's all right here for you, for everyone to see. Let's go out, hey. Let's go out and capture, let's go take what we want. Now. Do it like hey, a oh, 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 oh. Mike Godfrey joins me now. And Mike, tremendous players on the Houston offense. They rack up incredible yardage, incredible points. But there are great defensive players on Miami's defense. What do you think of that matchup? Well, the Miami defense has been successful stopping wishbone teams, eye teams, gear teams, one back teams. They've been successful against everything. But tonight, they're going to face their stiffest challenge with a run and shoot. It's a finesse offense that will stretch the zones. And I believe they'll have some problems against the Houston offense. If Miami is to be successful, their front four will have to get a rush on David Klinger. They'll have to work upfield, avoid the blocks, try to put pressure on him. If they don't, then they'll force him to blitz, and then they'll have to play some man coverage, which is out of character for the Miami defense. The middle linebacker will be on the super back. He'll be man-to-man -man on him, and the other inside linebacker, they'll always have two linebackers with four defensive linemen to play the run. What we might watch for early is number 45, Darren Smith, the linebacker. He'll be placed in a position where he'll have to go against some receivers, so we'll look for that matchup right away. In the secondary, a lot of two deep by Miami. They're a two deep football team. They'll have to try to funnel everything into the middle, try to break up on the ball, make good hits, try to cause some fumbles, and the big key is that they don't tire and get sloppy and tackle the wrong way. There come the Canes, led by Dennis Erickson, 22-3 and three in his third season. Mike, you know, amid all the hoopla concerning the powerful Houston running shoot, very little has been said about what has historically been a very potent Miami offense. An offense that set a school record last year, gathering over 480 yards in average per game. An offense that just 12 days ago lit up the scoreboard in Arkansas for 31 points and over 500 total yards. You know, many tonight believe that Miami's ball control offense will have as much to say about the success of the run and shoot as their defense. Let's go over to Adrian Carson. 
Well, I'll tell you what, Jerry, as good as Houston's offense is, it's going to take a total team to beat the Miami Hurricanes here in the Orange Bowl tonight. I'm talking about the Cougar defense, a defense that was ranked 103rd out of 106 total Division I teams last year. Now, John Jenkins has reunited to defensive coordinator Ben Hurt and Melvin Robertson, the men who literally wrote the book on the 4-3 defense. The result is a steadier, simpler defense. These guys have turned into attackers. Mike, they are ready to attack the Hurricanes head on. All right, Adrian, this could be a game of monumental proportions. And, of course, we're in Miami, so the weather is great, 84 degrees. But both teams used to practicing in the hot weather, so it shouldn't be much of a concern for them. The humidity, 70%. Chance of rain, only 15%, and that would have to favor Houston. John Jenkins, the guru of the run and shoot. Even people like Mouse Davis and June Jones, who are the pro gurus for this offense, say he is light years ahead of them in what he does, Mike. He's done an outstanding job, Mike, because he's tinkered with it. He hasn't just stayed with what he started with. He's expanded the offense. He's done a fine job with it. Dennis Erickson, in his third year, won a national championship. And a lot of people say, well, he came into a wonderful situation. He did, but it is a very difficult situation because of the expectations of the people around the program. Sometimes those are the toughest jobs to take, the ones that you have to maintain. And Dennis Erickson has maintained this program. Miami will receive to start the game. Roman Anderson, one of the finest kickers in all of football, has it teed up at the 35. Kevin Williams and Daryl Spencer are deep to receive. Williams, number five, the fastest man on the team. He has promised he will break one for a touchdown before this season is over. It hasn't been done for the Canes in 11 years. here tonight in probably not an overstatement to say this is a watershed opportunity for Houston to put their program in national perspective. Miami, of course, has been there ever since Howard Schnellenberger came to this city. We're underway at the Orange Bowl. Williams? Roman Anderson got a piece of an ankle but excellent field position for Miami. Gino Toretta, the latest in the royal line of Miami quarterbacks that began with Jim Kelly in 1979. He threw for nearly 300 yards a week ago. The Canes would like to control the ball. They're hoping for a big game from Stephen McGuire, who already has 25 career TDs. The line has only two starters back. Left tackle Leon Searcy, a great pass blocker, is a preseason All-American. He is playing with a broken hand. McGuire is the single setback. They will go with three wide receivers all night long. And movement on the line. It appeared that the right guard, Rudy Barber, the sophomore from Miami, came up. Offense. Still first down. Not the way to start. Now it's first and 15. Well, I think both teams are a little nervous. I look for Houston to try to pressure Miami early, and then for Gino Toretta of Miami to check off and try to go deep early. First play, they'll try to feel each other out. And like Houston, Miami with great speed receivers. McGuire will get the first carry. They would love to keep the ball on the ground, but Houston swarms him on defense. Houston with a gambling, attacking style up front. They're led by Glenn Cadrez, a former linebacker and an excellent athlete. And outside linebacker Tyrone Davis had a great opening game. Six tackles, three behind the line, and two sacks. The secondary led by Jerry Parks, who's switching from safety to corner last year. He led the nation with eight interceptions. The last tackle made by Eric Blunt, who's a three-year starter, number 42 for the Houston Cougars. Toretta to throw for the first time. Guns it and through the hands of Copeland. Toretta in preseason camp won the quarterback job from Brian Forte. Forte has already transferred to Rutgers. 
and Dennis Erickson said it wasn't even a tough decision for him. Well, he likes Gino Toretta. He also likes his backup, Frank Costa, a freshman, redshirt freshman from Philadelphia. So, but Toretta has, has experience, and uh, that could be a telling tale tonight. His older brother, Jeff, Benny Tistaverde's backup for two years. Third and 13 Hurricanes, the opening possession. Flag is down, once again, movement in the line. Ball start on the offense, snap infraction, five-yard penalty. This will be on the center, Kelvin Harris. See the center, just move the ball just a little bit to try to draw him offside, but you know they've had a long layoff. They haven't had their usual seven days, and it may affect the offense a little bit more than the defense in this game early. Third and 18 right now, and look at Houston showing blitz. Now they back out of it. Toretta now forced out of the pocket. Blunt makes the tackle from behind at the 35. Eric Blunt from Memphis, Tennessee. And Miami will have to kick it away. An outstanding opening series for that Houston defense. Houston defense will blitz on this particular play to bring the outside linebacker. Line twist. They pick it up real well. There's nobody open. Gino Toretta tries to run. And again, good defense. And it has to give confidence to that Houston offense. Defense. Look at what Miami's punt return defense has done. 72 yards allowed in three years. Paul Snyder to punt to Jerry Parks, who's an outstanding return man from the 22. He may break a three-year record in this one. Got it back to the 37-yard line. David Klingler leads the Houston run and shoot last week alone. He threw for 510 yards and nine touchdowns. He had six of them in the second quarter, yet another NCAA record. His favorite target, junior Fred Gilbert, 11 catches, 180 yards, and two TDs, two TDs in his first start. The only interior lineman back from last year, all-conference guard Mike Giesler. He's 6'4", 305. Last year, Klingler throws are just incredible numbers. 54 touchdowns, another NCAA record, and he has a slew of them. Klingler, what else? To throw on first down. Sanders on the little swing. He's wrapped up by middle linebacker Michael Barrow. On defense, Miami will go with speed up front for a pass rush. Rusty Medeiros had a fine opener against Arkansas with two sacks. The Canes' best defender, linebacker Darren Smith, he led the team in tackles last year and is excellent in coverage. It's a major test for the secondary and a chance for free safety Daryl Williams to shine. He's a Thorpe Award candidate to honor the country's best defensive back. A loss of two on the last play. Sanders is the single setback, and there comes terminology the super back. Four-man rush, Sanders. And Mike, that was really slow developing. The slow is a draw play. Michael Barrow, who's number 56, is responsible for the lone setback. He made the play on the draw. He'll read the draw, the trap, and he'll try to meet that super back on the snap. John Jenkins signaling in the play on third and 12. Houston, of course, calls the play at the line of scrimmage. And now they change the scoreboard to third and nine. Four-man rush, Klingler with some speed, eludes it, complete first down, Miami territory, all the way down to the 46-yard line, first down, Darren Smith. Runs him out of bounds, a 16-yard gain for John Brown the third. People think that, that David Clear is rolling out all the time. It's almost a drop-back pass. He's just behind the guard. Here you see him duck under the rush, th throwing to his left. Look at the velocity he gets on the football. Good pass reception by John Brown. Good first down. He throws off the wrong foot as well as anybody I've ever seen. He has a gun. He does that. First first down of the ball game. Houston and Miami territory. Guy on the delay. Flag is down, and so is Guy at the 44-yard line. Stopped by Jesse Armstead, the right outside linebacker who is coming back off a terrible knee injury. We'll check the penalty. Holding. Offense. 
And this call will go against the Cougars and back them up 10 yards from the spot of the foul. Well, this is a split crew, the Big East and the Southwest Conference. That's John Sophie with the white hat on the referee. The umpire is from the Southwest Conference. He made the holding call. But to me, the most important officials in this game are the back judge and the side judge because so many passes will be down the field. You'll see a lot of pass interference or opportunities for call. As a coach, what did you think when you saw a split crew? Well, it depends. If I was on the road, I was happy to see him. If I was home, I wanted my own group. John Jenkins obviously on the road, and this one is going for him. It's first and 20. Tommy Guy remains in at the super back spot. He's number 32. And four wide outs, as always, for the Cougars. Klingler shovel pass to Guy, and he is bothered by Michael Barrow. Michael Barrow was not on any of the preseason lists of fine linebackers in this country. He put up copies of the magazines all over his locker in his room. I trust him at go inside. Now he works outside to try to put pressure on David Klinger. But Michael Barrow, again, watch number 56. He has the super back. He just waits for him. He's there to make the tackle. Man to man. Second and 21. Gilbert on the quick pass. Stays on his feet. Fights off another tackle. There is a flag down. It looked like Miami jumped early. Daryl Williams, number 31, made the tackle. You know, Mike, the no huddle breaks down the concentration of the defense. It keeps them from disguising. It keeps them from getting substitutes on the field. That's what Houston is trying to do with the no huddle. And it causes some problems for the defense. I know when I was watching Miami practice the other day, Dennis Erickson said it gave them just a little bit of problem that they never, they always like to huddle, but they don't get the opportunity against Houston. They're offsetting fouls. Offsides, defense, illegal formation on the offense, penalties offset. It's still second down. So we'll do second and 21 all over again. It's obvious that John Jenkins is trying to give David Klingler a chance to get his feet up under him before he starts to throw the ball down the field. Again, let's watch the matchup of number 45, Darren Smith versus the receivers. Klingler looking to the sideline, Dennis Erickson. Watching his defense, he wants to get it done with a four-man rush. This is UNLV, Kentucky, Loyal and Merrimont style football. It is the basketball. <laughs> Billy Tubbs at Oklahoma would love this. He's another one. Second and 21. Delay to God. And Miami doing very well with that play. Once again, Jesse Armstead makes the tackle. Now, why? The run and shoot thought of as a passing offense, but they do run a lot. Well, I think the most important thing is to try to control the rush early. So you run the football early. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if they start rolling Davey Klingler out a little bit to try to slow the rush down. But again, this running is to try to affect the rush a little bit. Remember, they're going to try to tire down the defensive front of Miami with the no huddle and just trying to run the football and throw it as many times as they can. Takes a lot of energy to pass rush. Third and 18. Klingler with time. Brown back trying to pick it off and knock it down. Brown knocked it away from Marcus Grant. Hurley Brown out of Merritt Island, Florida started seven games a year ago before he was hurt. Two deep defense. You got Hurley Brown sitting deep on the hash. David Klingler just airs this one out to Marcus Grant. Could have been intercepted by Hurley Brown, but Marcus Grant, you'll see number 81, comes back to try to become now a defensive player to keep him from intercepting it. Back deep for the Hurricanes. Charles Langston to punt, and Kevin Williams waits at the 10-yard line. So both teams have one possession and nothing to show for it. Hurricanes with an eight-man front. Flag is down. Not a very good kick. Not very good at all. We will check the penalty. A 21-yard punt. Out of bounds. And at the 33-yard line. Formation on the offense. Players are not up on the line of scrimmage. 
And what that means is that Miami will take the 21 yard punt. Well, what happens a lot of times when you're punting the football is your outside person on the line of scrimmage on your punt team likes to get a little depth to help him with a ricochet block when he has to block two men. And that particular time, they called him for being too far back and not on the line of scrimmage. Penalties to climb. Miami's ball. Miami takes over in good field position at its own 33. Scoreless first quarter from the Orange Bowl. We'll be back in a moment. ESPN's Thursday night CFA, Houston and Miami, is brought to you by Dodge for performance, quality, safety, and value. Welcome home, America. And by Smooth Bush Beer and Easy Drinking Bush Light. Scoreless first quarter, 9.52 to go from the Orange Bowl, Miami and Houston. It's a young Miami team. 11 players drafted off the roster from a year ago. Toretta with McGuire behind him sends him to a wing. Toretta airs it out deep sideline. An excellent coverage intended for Copeland, who had a 99-yarder a week ago. John Brown on the defense. Let's go to Adrian Karsten. Mike, thank you very much. The offensive line just huddling here behind me. The problem there that they were having in their first offensive series is the noise from the Miami fans. They're blaming those socks on the fact that they cannot hear David Klingler or the checkoffs once they get to the line of scrimmage. If this continues in the first quarter, it could be a big surprise and something that the offensive line is not ready for. Adrian, thanks very much. Second and 10, 9.46 to go, first period of play. <laughs> Toretta, classic drop back passer, throws complete to Thomas. And Thomas out to the 47-yard line. Wrapped up there by John W. Brown. There are three John Browns on the Houston roster. John W. Brown, a defensive back from Amarillo. Gino Toretta, here you see him from behind him. He's going to set up. Miami likes to get their pass off in 1-7, 1-9. Like the five-step drop, like to throw it quick. It was a good route, good throw. The Houston players said they had problems at Texas a year ago when the Longhorns beat them with the crowd noise. Most teams can overcome that with hand signals, however. McGuire, nice cutback. And into Houston territory at the 47-yard line. Darren Woods made the stop. Mag McGuire, not much of a practice player, but he's a gamer. Steve McGuire out of Brooklyn, New York. Broke in against Pittsburgh a couple years ago when I was on the sideline. Had a big day against us. You remember that, huh? I'll never forget those guys <laughs> had big days. Second and three for the Hurricanes. Their second possession. They've registered their first first down. Houston shows blitz, and here they come. And McGuire runs through the blitz. Very close to a first down at the Houston 43. The stop made by Kenny Perry. The strong safety and Jason Youngblood trailing the play. Number eight, Kenny Perry. Made the stop. Miami, of course, against the Houston defense, was 103rd in the country a year ago. Do they think they can score on these guys? Oh, I think they do. What they want to do is keep David Klingler over on that sideline, and the only way to do that is by keeping their offense on the field. So they'd like to have good mix. Early when you saw uh, Houston try to blitz them, they, they tried to go up on top, and I, they've had a good balance right now in run and pass. Now I look for Houston to go to the 46 defense, which is the Chicago Bear defense, an eight-man front, and light them up at this point. Try to really pressure Gino Toretta. Of course, you think of ball control, you think of running the ball, but McGuire says he doesn't want it 30 times a game. He says, hey, you really get beaten up. First and 10 inside the Houston 43. Here's the eight-man front. He's going to check off. Here comes the blitz, and Toretta unloads and really overthrows Copeland. Had double coverage on him. Jerry Parks was deep, making sure he couldn't get that deep. McCoy was coming hard on the blitz. Houston moved to the eight-man front late and see the pressure that they're going to get and bring in the linebacker. Gino Toretta is going to drop back to pass, and this is what Houston wants. They want him to try to go for those deep routes. Watch the pressure that they bring. 
Linebackers right in the face of Gino Toretta, and that's the type of defense that they want to try to play in this game, Houston. Toretta only one out of four, 14 yards. He faces a second and 10 here. This time, the out pattern and incomplete just off the fingertips of Lamar Thomas out of Gainesville, Florida, the home of the Gators. And Toretta now one out of five. He had Lamar Thomas open, just threw it behind him. Steve Harris was uncovered. There's two of my favorites right there. Ben Hurt on the right is Melvin Robertson. Melvin coached at Texas A&M in Houston, coached under Emory Ballard. He said the other day he was there with the Veer, with Phil Yeoman, was with the wishbone with Emory Ballard, and now he's with a run and shoot with John Jenkins. He feels like he's back from the dead, he said. He's seen it all invented, hasn't he? Third and 10. And this Houston defense far improved from the Houston defense we saw a year ago. Toretta with time. He throws complete to Copeland. He's down to the 27-yard line. Copeland, this is the first time he's had a chance to really play. And Dennis Erickson said he could be the best wide receiver that Miami has ever had. Watch Gino Toretta under pressure here. They're getting a pretty good rush in the front four of Houston. Watch him set up again. He wants to get that ball off. No later than 1.9. He's under pressure, but he's getting a good throw to Horace Copeland, who's curling on the side, open for the first down. Now, again, I expect Houston now to blitz again. Martin Patton, number 32, is in as the single setback for Miami. And Patton gets the little swing pass. He has outstanding speed. Patton breaks at 15, 10, 5 to the 2. Kenny Perry and John W. Brown made the tackle, but it is first and goal. Of the four backs that they have that play, Patton is the guy with the speed. Houston had a great defensive call, and they blitzed. The one thing they couldn't account for is the speed and quickness of Melvin Patton. Darren Woods, number five, is right there to make the tackle, but Melvin Patton made two nice cuts to get the ball down to the two, three-yard line. McGuire back in as the setback. And they've got Jason Marucci, number 22, on his right. McGuire. Boy, just got back to the line of scrimmage in the entire center of that Houston defense stacked it up. If nothing else, this drive is taking time off the clock. We're down to 6.59 to go first period. Exactly what Bob Bretkowski, the offensive coordinator, wants. Long drives, but he also wants to score. He, he said the other day, I, it's not good enough just for me to have long drives and not be able to put points on the board. 6.44 to go first quarter. Miami and Houston, nothing, nothing from the Orange Bowl. Second and goal for the Canes at the Houston 2. Houston messed up on defense there, but then he had to be a minimum of here. And they've taken a timeout to straighten it out. Toretto will come over to talk to Dennis Erickson. We've got a timeout and a nothing, nothing game. We'll be back in a moment. Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Mercier came home. Nothing, nothing but Miami at the Houston 2, second and goal. It's been an impressive drive so far. Time consuming, yardage consuming. And it started after a punt of 21 yards from the Houston Cougars. They started from their own 33 yard line. Mike, it looks like three tight ends in the ball game for Miami. Mag McGuire has gone out, Patton has checked in. Patton on the toss. Got a chance to get outside. Touchdown! made the tackle but a second too late and talk about automatic Carlos Huerta is on for the point after in a regular season game the senior has never missed 145 in a row an NCAA record 146 and counting there's no substitute for speed watch Melvin Patton watch the inside charge of the defense Melvin Patton just outruns Darren Woods for the corner 
Good play call. They went to three tight ends, went outside. Melvin Patton for the touchdown. Coming up tomorrow, Major League Baseball, the Dodgers and the Braves. Did you see the three-man no-hitter? And the Braves trying to go a game and a half up tonight. They're leading in the ninth. And then after that, the White Sox and the Angels. Hope you'll join us for our exclusive coverage of Major League Baseball tomorrow night. Patton celebrating on the bench. And this young man with a bright future. Let's go to the sideline and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Gentlemen, that call on the touchdown play was all Gino Toretta. He turned to his coach, Dennis Erickson, a minute ago and signaled that he wanted to pitch the ball. They called a timeout. He came to the sideline, talked it over with the coach, said, I want to go outside. We can score outside. It was Toretta's call, and it worked. Boy, you like those kind of calls, Mike, when they work from the players. Three deep. Tracy Good. For Houston, Tracy Good, the center deep man. And good at the one-yard line. Fumble. And Houston will maintain possession at its own 24. That is the value of having great athletes because you can put reserves on special teams and they can make something happen. Well, you talk about dodging a bullet here. Houston, really on the kickoff return, is very fortunate. Watch the ball come out right here. C.J. Richardson got a helmet on it. Very alert play by the Houston player. Knocked that ball out of bounds. Tyler Mucho was the man who saved it, number 45. And now they will move Houston back to the 16-yard line. That goes out of bounds. His return to the spot of the fumble, if it's beyond the spot. an outstanding official there. John Sophie had him many times. I used to yell at the officials a lot. There's one I didn't yell at. I, I really respected him. He'll, he'll have control of this game. So Houston has to start from the 16. Quickly, they get it up to Gilbert. He's up to the 20-yard line. Fred Gilbert had 11 catches in his first game a week to go back to the sideline and Jerry Punch. Guys, a minute ago, Miami defensive coordinator Bob Carmelo has told his defensive line, Rusty Madaris and company, guys, get up field, get up field in a hurry. Make Klingler step up into the pocket. Meanwhile, Randy Shannon told the secondary, chuck those guys. Make sure you get them home just for a second or two, and we'll sack the quarterback. Let's watch for Madaris to make that move up field. All right, Jerry, gain of five on the last play to Gilbert to transfer from UCLA. Fakes it this time. Swings it down the sideline. Almost caught John Brown the third. Tried to catch it nearly behind his back. And good coverage by Darrell Williams, who's their finest player in the secondary. John Brown, you see the outside receiver. There's the two deep coverage. Knocked out of bounds, comes back in. Ball thrown behind him, and now here comes up the safety to hit him. He was back on the hash. Miami's getting it done on defense, Mike. Klingler, four out of six, but only 18 yards. Third and five. They got to the initial pressure by Rusty Madaris, just as Jerry Punch told you. He had two sacks a week ago against Arkansas. What Miami is doing with their defensive linemen is just turn them loose. Watch Rusty Madaris come inside and put pressure on. He was blocked. Pass didn't get off in time. The offensive lineman left him loose, and Rusty Madaris gets the first sack. Langston to kick. He had a 21-yarder on his first effort that set up the Miami touchdown drive, and that's Kevin Williams waiting at his own 44-yard line. Langston, the senior from Corin, California. They set up the return, and it is returnable. Williams back to the 40. He's got a wall. Flag is down. Speed to burn. <laughs> Williams finally forced out of bounds inside the Houston 40-yard line, but we will check the flag. A 46-yard punt, a return of 22.
and they'll bring this one back. Watch on the return. Watch number 66 in the white. There's the clip that sprung Williams on the punt return. Miami as Houston's offense has not been able to come up with a big play yet. We have a timeout with 4.32 to go in the quarter. It is 7 nothing Miami. Miami takes over at its own 30, leading 7 to nothing. The Miami defense has done its job, and it has over the years. Just look at the stats on this. I mean, Miami's defense, it's it's a cliche but you do win with defense and they win national championships with defense the key early in this ball game on the first two series they've been able to get pressure with the four man front Your Klingler waiting for another opportunity his chances for a Heisman trophy may be resting on this ball game doesn't necessarily have to win but he needs to play well Toretta changing the play again as Houston showing blitz. They come anyway, and Toretta unloads intended for Copeland covered by John Brown like a second uniform, but he still made the catch a gain of 45. Here comes the blitz again by Houston. They're going to try to pressure him. Horace Copeland on a deep route. Toretta sets up in the throw. Watch again. They want to go deep when Houston pressures them. Here's the throw. He lays it out there. Horace Copeland, pretty good coverage by John Brown, number 25. Just a good pass and a good reception by Horace Copeland. Of course, the Houston defense trying to force the tempo, and when they give you man coverage, you've got to burn them, and they did. Nice catch by Copeland. Great throw by Toretta. McGuire cuts it back. McGuire inside the 15-yard line stop by Kenny Perry, the strong safety, and Darren Woods, the free safety. Let's check in with Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, fellas, we got a pennant race update for you. The Atlanta Braves have won their seventh straight to beat the Padres 5-1 behind a Ron Gant homer. At the moment, they lead the second-place Dodgers by a full game. Dodgers tie with Houston 2-2 in the sixth. At halftime, stay with us. We'll have our halftime blitz. Set you up for Saturday's games. Back down to Mike and Mike in Miami. All right, Chris, thanks very much. Miami driving again, already leading 7 0. McGuire, room on the right side. To the 5, to the 4. Very close to another first down. Tyrone Davis drove him out of bounds. When you pressure somebody on defense, you see Ben Hurt and Melvin Robertson. When you pressure people and you come with defensive backs and blitz, your other defensive backs are in man coverage, and that's when Stephen McGuire was able to get it outside. There wasn't anybody there. Miami's been in so many big games, it helps them. Oh, yeah. Seem to play about four a year with everything riding on it. It is a first down, first and goal outside the three. McGuire. They have lost half a yard that time in the middle linebacker Ryan McCoy, a preseason all Southwestern Conference player, was the first man on the stop. Sophomore from Beaumont, Texas. I say got 12 men on the field, Houston. Well, that's a good way to defense Miami. If you can get away with it. Which is 12 men on the field. 12 men on the field. That'll be a half the distance to the goal penalty. Well, when things aren't going well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Even press line, being press line, Ohio, I can count to twelve. That official right back here is responsible for that call. Your attention, please, Charles Elkin. Charles Elkin, please report to the stadium manager's offense. There he is, right there. That's his job is to count every play, a number of defensive players. Total yards so far. Total domination by Miami here in the first period, which only has 3.01 to go. Now it will be first and goal inside the two. First and goal at the two. It's exactly what Dennis Erickson wanted. 
be able to move the ball and keep Houston's offense off the field. Patton back in as a single setback. Toretta changing the play. Wants to throw. He's the slowest of Miami's receivers, but he has the best hands. And let's hand it to Toretta. He changed the play, recognized the defense, and threw the fade for the touchdown. Gino Toretta had Lamar Thomas versus a linebacker, Tyrone Davis. Huerta is on for the point after. This would be 147 in a row. And it is. here against a, a linebacker and look how he tightens his split up here and then they're going to throw the fade over here in the corner watch Lamar Thomas come off the ball he heads for the corner he's got all kind of room to work over here just a great catch here's another look watching Gino Toretta just lay it out there he's got a lot of field to work with just put some air under the ball lets Lamar work there's the catch touchdown that's not the way Houston won to start but remember the run and shoot will have their day give them a minute and they can get a they can get 21 points for you 70 yard drive another impressive drive here in the first period if you are Houston's coach right now what do you tell them you just got to settle them down defensively you just you've got some cracks you blitzed a couple times you got caught but they had good coverage and what John Jenkins has to do is just settle his team down. He knows he's got a great quarterback. He feels like he has a great offense. They're capable of scoring a lot of points. Just don't let your dauber get down. Don't lose your confidence. Stay with it. On the other hand, Miami's full of confidence over here. Oh, yeah. Houston has broken more than 250 NCAA Number Southwest one, Conference and school records with this offense. But here's what Miami leading the nation in the last five years, 55 and 5. Unbelievable. And those have been some pretty good schedules and pretty good teams they've beaten. Even if you didn't play anybody but Florida State every year, you'd have a good schedule. State championships here is tough. This one goes two yards deep in the end zone, taken by Tracy Good. He'll down it. And they'll start from the 20. Hope you'll be with us every Saturday. It starts at 11.30 Eastern, college game day. Chris Fowler and Lee Corso have a preview of college football for you. And next Saturday, we have two games at 12.30. Louisville with those injury problems at 19th-ranked Ohio State. Then at 7.30, this should be a beauty from Gainesville. Number 16, Alabama. Number 6, Florida. Ron Franklin and my partner Mike Gottfried will be in Gainesville for that game. You're, you're everywhere, aren't you? <laughs> Except home. <laughs> yeah. Let's see what Houston can do. Keith Whiteley is checked in as the superback, and here are the hand signals against all that noise. Wendler's back. He didn't have a chance. Mark Caesar, number 76, their biggest defensive lineman. He just flew through there. Let's go to the sideline. Adrian Karsten. Well, Mike, I'll tell you what. David Klinger came off the field, and he said to his coach, Coach, I'm just not getting any time. Coach said, are you seeing all your receivers? He said, Coach, I don't have a time to take a look at all my receivers. The next thing Jenkins said to his coach was, we may take, eliminate one of our receivers, put another man up on the offensive line. Run and shoot is becoming a reload offense, Coach. Boy, Caesar was there in a heartbeat. Remember, he didn't start, so they've started to substitute already. Klingler shovel pass to Whiteley. Cuts back into a tackler and is brought down as he crossed the 20 to the 23 yard line. Kenny Lopez and Michael Barrow made the tackle. Flags are down and Klingler was leveled after the, after the pass was thrown.
Klein was the man on the rush for the Canes. Here you see the little shovel pass. Darren oh. Klein just wanted to make sure he got a piece of David Klinger, but he was about three seconds too late. And a break for Miami that there was a clipping call on the same play. Houston needs to throw the ball downfield a little bit more. Now they haven't had time. I think Klingler would love to have the opportunity to put downfield. What's well, a good move by Bob Carmelo, it's the defensive line coach. He has an entirely different defensive front four, and they will try to keep fresh people after David Klingler. Klingler four out of six, but 18 yards so far. That won't get it done, especially in the running shoot. Guy. Caesar brings him down at the 15, and there's another flag down. Mark Caesar out of Newark, New Jersey, could be a dominant football player, but they said he has been so so. Defense. To run there's the, a break for Houston. It really is. To run the defense, the 4 3, you have to have defensive tackles. How about these guys? Jerome Brown, Cortez Kennedy. Russell, Maryland, the years I coached the Pitt and played against Miami, had to face those guys all the time. <laughs> Mark Caesar, they had high hopes for Mark Caesar that he was going to develop in that same type of player. And like Cortez County, he really didn't develop till late. That's right. And one number one draft choice after another out of this defensive line. For the last five years they've had one. Second and nine after the penalty. 1.18 to go first quarter. Houston has been shut down. Tommy Guy was the super back. I say shut down so far. Miami jumps again. Guy hitting the backfield. Lopez got a key west. He was there before Tommy Guy could take two steps. We'll check this play. Houston's getting more yards and penalties than they are in passing. Watch sides. Defense. See Tom Tuberville. It's white. Black shirt is Bob Carmelo. It's a defensive line coach. You gotta feel happy for them because their front four is huge. David Klinger, they're stopping the run. There's Tom Tuberville. He calls a defensive signal. He's here with Jimmy Johnson, who stayed on. He's done an outstanding job with the Miami defense. Miami has already been penalized five times for 35 yards. It's got to be frustrating for Klingler if you're a passing quarterback. If you can't count to two before somebody hits you, you can't pass. Second and four after two straight penalties. Throws right through the hands of Tracy Good. Good caught five a week ago. Last year, he was number 10 in the country in receiving. What happens in the Houston offense, Tracy Good's uncovered. That's why David Klingler's throwing. That's not a... That wasn't a call or designed play. When he comes to the line of scrimmage, if he sees a receiver that is uncovered, he has the ability to just pick it up and throw it. He can throw it, but you've got to catch it. Four out of seven, 18 yards after that block. And Miami's defense beginning to celebrate, and they have a right. Miami is baby David Klingler into that throw. David Klinger and, and the John Jenkins, when they get that offense on the sideline, must throw the ball. Here's the uncovered receiver. See the throw? They figure if they get the ball to him and then a missed tackle by Jesse Armstead, they have a big play. But instead, ball's thrown in the ground, and you're punting the football. Gilbert, who caught 11 a week ago, had to short hop that one. This is Kevin Williams. And Langston, who has averaged 33 and a half yards a kick, is back to punt again, standing just outside his own 10. Low line drive. Williams from the 29. Knocked out of bounds as he crosses the 40 to about the 42-yard line. And Miami will have outstanding field position again. A punt of 45, a return of 13. And if you're Houston's defense, now's the time where you have to make something happen. One thing when you blitz, you live with a blitz, you die with a blitz sometime. And, and it, I really like the way they play defense. Miami has just really executed well. But I, I believe Ben Hurt and Melvin Robertson have to stay with their blitzing concept. McGuire, the setback behind the junior quarterback, Gino Toretta. A very confident, poised young man. McGuire. 
Houston reacts well this time. Alan Aldridge, number 96, the first man there. Let's check in on the sideline with Jerry Punch. As the flag goes down, we'll check that for you. They're both personal fouls. One here, personal foul on the defense. Also, oh, I hate that. Still second now. Somebody had to do it first. Let's check in with Jerry. Guys, junior wide receiver Horace Copeland, number 88, the man who caught that 99-yarder against Arkansas a couple of weeks ago, has sprained his right ankle. They brought him back to the bench, retaped him. He still couldn't bear a lot of weight on it. They have put a different shoe and taped over the shoe. Now, he's walking around, but walking awfully gingerly on that right foot. Thanks, Jerry. Second and eight, Miami at its own 44 after the offsetting penalty. And now the officials will stop the clock with 16 seconds left. This would be a good screen down for Miami. The way they have the rush coming up the field, the blitzing situations, this would be a nice time to throw a middle screen. Play clock had gone to zero. And the officials are checking to see if it should have. It was our time to correct the clock. Everything is all set by second down. Glad to know everything's all set. And it has been with Toretta all night. All the talk this week's been David Klingler. Gino Toretta has stepped up during the first quarter. He's faced some other challenges. 1989, he had to come in because of an injury situation and leave this ball club and did. McGuire with a nice block on the outside. Got out of bounds. Late hit. Flag. Not a good place to hit a Miami running back three yards out of bounds right in front of the Miami bench, and that's Allen Aldridge. Watch Stephen McGuire, and here's the hit late that Darren Woods just just couldn't stop it against 15-yard penalty, and really, they don't need penalties. First of all, play that on the defense. Klingler talking with his offense, trying to get something started. They've really been shut down. That's the end of the quarter. Miami leads Houston 14 nothing. Great marks of this city. Just saying how sweet it is. And Jackie Gleason, a longtime resident and performer here. We're glad to be associated with that. And glad to be associated with this ballgame. Miami, first and 10 at the Houston 33 yard line. 160 yards total offense for Miami so far. 13 for Houston's run and shoot. In their opening game, they had over 700. But in their opening game, they weren't playing Miami. <laughs> A busy night for officials. Patton will get the carry and they go with a run blitz and Blunt got him in the backfield. But like you said, you live by it and die by it and that time they had the right angle. Watch Eric Blunt, number 42, just going to run through. The tackles will take an outside charge. Backers inside. Ryan McCoy's on a scrape. Good defensive call by Melvin Robertson and Ben Hurt. There they are right there. Those guys got some experience. They're getting after the officials, too. Second and 14 after the running play lost four. Toretta to Patton, a little swing. Avoided one tackle, gets down to the 34-yard line. James Bevel, the senior from Jasper, Texas. Number 77, chased the play and made the tackle. When Melvin Patton makes you miss, and, uh, again, they, they really had a good defensive call, and they had a man on Melvin Patton, but he just made a good move. Patton with 4.39 speed. He said this year is his big chance. 
And he's made the most of it so far in this game. A couple of outstanding runs. Third and ten now. Trips left for Toretta. Has time to throw. Deep sideline. Williams. To the 10 5 for the point after. He was already two for two in this game. Three for three and a new NCAA record. As you watch Williams taking the 33-yard pass from Toretta in Miami. Now leads Houston 21 nothing. ESPN's Thursday night CFA Houston and Miami is brought to you by Subaru. It's what to drive. And by Hager Apparel Company. Hager has a feel for the way you live. A feel for America. 21-0. Canes. 13-30 to go. First half of play. Huerta tees it up at the 35. Tracy Good. Is the deep man back with Torn Polk and Keandre Sanders. And Houston badly needs something to happen for them on offense. Good to the nine. Trips over a prone tackler, gets out to the 22. Let's go to the sideline and Adrian Karsten. Well, Mike, I'll tell you what, Coach Godfrey, what you said about Klingler rolling out, that's exactly what they were diagramming on the board here a moment ago. But all the diagramming in the world doesn't do any good when you've got what I've got behind me here. These guys, when they come off the field for their adjustments, have to face the Miami crowd. They're having balls of tape thrown at them, cups of water and everything else. Coach Godfrey, when they come off the field, why don't they just change their process, turn their team toward the field and coach them that way? He asked you, not me. When they get behind, <laughs> whether they're home or not, they're going to get things thrown at them. Klingler from the 22 finally has a little time to throw and throws off the hands of a diving Berlin Brown. Now, the adjustments that you have to make on offense, obviously your game plan coming in, you've got to do something with it. Two things, I think they got to roll David Klingler out, they got to take off the automatics and quit throwing to the uncovered receiver, they got to work the ball down the field more. See, what's happening is Miami's running their base defense, they haven't even went to a nickel and have been able to contain them. Houston has one first down in this game, Klingler is nailed just as he throws intended for John Brown the third and slow getting up. This is again the first team defensive line is back in. They're trying to keep them fresh. They're rolling eight people in to try to put pressure on David Klingler. The offensive line from Houston has not is not getting a job done. Tommy Guy is the super back on third and ten. Klingler has missed on his last five throws. I didn't notice much difference when Miami had a second team line in there. They ate him up too. Klingler, a half roll, throws to the sideline, too high intended for Martin Grant. And it's three plays and out again for the vaunted run and shoot. seen it before here in the Orange Bowl 38 straight wins they've done it with defense and they have just smothered people as you mentioned in the open no matter what kind of offense you run they seem to have an answer Tay you have to credit every area their special teams is winning right now their offense is winning and their defense is winning Langston to punt to Williams He's had two good ones after a 21 yard shank That's his best kick of the night. Williams back to the 27, lost it, got it on the first hop, and is got away somehow. 
He made six people miss and got back to the 35-yard line. That was unbelievable. here he's just going to be hit by about six people first of all the ball hits him in the head that's the first hit he takes now they surround him nobody tackles him he just kind of gets away right here and almost bust this play a great return nothing is going right for houston and that's a nice call by the official normally you would blow the whistle because you think he's down but his knee never touched see the miami defense here tom tuberville talked to a lot of pro people to come back to this Toretta changing the play. McGuire. Got a couple up to the 35. Number 30, Stephen McGuire. 12.44 to go in the half. The storyline from the Orange Bowl, all one-sided. Houston has gained but 23 yards. Miami nearly 200. And Toretta has put two touchdown passes on the board. Miami with a total of 21. David Klingler has not seen a pass rush quite like this one. Blitz against Coretta. He reads it, throws to the sideline, complete down back to Thomas. Thomas breaks the tackle, makes a man miss. Finally dragged out of bounds by Tracy Gentry. That's what the run and shoot supposed to do when a receiver catches a ball, missed tackle gain yardage and that's what Lamar Thomas was able to do. I'm going to go back to what I was saying about the Miami defense. Tom Tuberville and the defensive staff, Sonny Lubick, they talked to a lot of people. A lot of people when they play the run and shoot, they go to different defenses, they go to three-man rushes and he said everybody he talked to told him, said, listen, we've learned one thing, stay with your own defense. Do the things that got you here and even though their 4-3 front is open to some things that the run and shoot do. They know how to play it, and they're pressuring people with the base defense. They haven't even went to their nickel package yet by bringing in the nickel back. They, they haven't, haven't had, had to. No, they sure haven't had to. Toretta is at 7 out of 11, 135 yards, 6 straight. Of course, just the same 4-3 defense when Oklahoma came to the orange pole with a wishbone, and people said Oklahoma's going to tear them up. They played the straight 4-3, and they whipped them. Toretta changing the play again. McGuire cuts it outside, pushed out of bounds by James Bevel. You have to be so impressed by Gino Toretta and not only his physical ability, but the smarts he has shown in this game. You know what he's trying to do tonight? He's trying to put his name on the ballot for the high. He's got a tremendous opportunity here. He's not made many mistakes. He's automatic. He's got himself out of some bad plays. That particular play, when he gave the ball to Steve McGuire, he was able to get outside and pick up a couple yards. He's done a very good job of leading this Miami offense. Very impressive. Martin Patton checking into the backfield on second and seven. Here comes the blitz. Toretta hangs in there, throws deep, and overthrows Daryl Spencer, who had his man beaten by a step. That's the second time they have nearly burned that blitz. Five-step drop by Miami quarterbacks in the past. Gino Toretta, just another one in a long line. They're going to get that ball off, and as I said, between 1.7 and 1.9, you have a hard time getting to him. He just threw it a little bit too far down the field. The pressure by Linton Weatherspoon on that last play. His brother Chuck rushed for over 1,000 yards three straight times for this Cougar offense. Dennis Erickson breathing a little easier, but he knows the run and shoots capable of putting points on the board. And I don't think John Jenkins is breathing at all at this point. <laughs> Third and seven. Another blitz. Toretta gets it from behind. A flag is down. Perry and Aldridge coming hard, and it was Kenny Perry, the senior safety from Arlington, Texas, who got there. He may have also been clipped. Holding offense. Held, not clipped. And Perry signaling the sideline, let's turn it down and get the ball. Kenny Parrish coming off the right side, the strong safety. The tight end is trying to get to him, Joe Moore, but he ends up holding Kenny Perry. And they get to Gino Toretta. Gino just held on the ball just a little long there. Perfectly clean hit, but when you get hit from behind, down around the knees like that, very scary. Holding, offense, decline, fourth down. 
that was a big series for Houston's defense. They couldn't afford to fall down on another score. Their defense that time looked like the defense the first time it took the field and stopped Miami. They're going to make some big plays because they're blitzing, but they're going to give up some big ones. Already have. Paul Snyder, 6'1", 201 pound junior, is on to kick to Jerry Parks. Line drive kick, Parks at the 15. Gets it back to the 25 yard line. Return to 10 after a 33 yard punt. Words exchanged. We have a timeout. 11 23 to go in the half. Miami continues to dominate. David Klingler, who threw for 630 yards his first game, sees his team down 21 0. He has thrown for 18 yards in this one and has missed his last six straight. But make no, no mistake, this is an offense that can put points on the board and do it in a hurry. Klingler with the bomb and well overthrown. Intended for Marcus Grant, but 10 yards beyond him. Let's go to Jerry Punt. Jerry? Guys, you wonder why I mess with the success, but Bob Carmelo, its defensive line coach, is changing it up a little bit. The defensive rush will differ. The defensive ends are going to stunt inside. Caesar and company, on the other hand, will rush to the outside. They'll try to pinch off Klingler and try to get him in the pocket and sack him with a little bit different rush up front. Now, why do you make and so successful. Well, you just want to give them a lot of different looks. That last time they brought the middle linebacker, Michael Barrow. First time they gave up the linebacker on the blitz. Klingler, second and ten. Under some pressure again. Goes out to Gilbert in the flat. Makes one man miss. Driven out of bounds to the 28-yard line. Good move to get away from Ryan McNeil, who was their best cover guy. And Gilbert was the transfer from UCLA. Did not catch a pass there. Played as a sophomore in five games. And in his opening game as a starter, had 11 catches for 180 yards. Houston's got to get the ball down the field to like the 10 to 15 yard area. This first down for Miami, 10 first down for Houston. One. And Houston got that first down on its opening possession. Four man rush. Klingler with some time, throws complete, first down, their second of the ball game. Marcus Grant makes the catch, Herbert James knocked him out of bounds. That's the type of routes they're going to have to work to try to get some first downs. David Klinger will roll out away from the three receiver side, which Miami went to a three deep coverage and that opened up Marcus Grant. Plenty of time to go. First half, 11 minutes on the clock. There is a flag down on this play. We'll check it out for you. We were watching Klingler in warm-ups. Personal foul on the defense. That's a big play. That takes it into Miami territory from the Houston 35. Here's if you're if you want to be behind 21 to nothing, which I don't know any coach in the right mind would, would want to be behind. You'd, you'd want to be in the run and shoot because that should be able to be an offense to catch up. This is the first mistake Miami's made all day. The personal foul call. I still think, Mike, they're, they must do something off play action to be able to get... David Klingler outside that rush. Right now, the rush is to the guard box. In a drop back game, everybody's just coming forth and thrust upfield. He's got to be able to get away from the rush and scramble for some yards also. They're totally ignoring the run, just letting the middle linebacker take care of that. Here's more pressure, Medeiros. There's going to be a flag down on this as Medeiros was held. Klingler throws off the wrong foot, completes it to Gilbert. Gilbert hit two or three times, finally goes down, but they'll bring this play back. Medeiros obviously held as he was coming in on the blind side of Klingler. Holding offense. And that offensive line of Houston is just getting a whipping. Watch the rush by the Miami defensive end. He's going inside. Now, the reason they're going inside, starts outside, no, he's going to keep. He's going to continue outside. Now you see the tackle come outside also to put the pressure on David Klinger. Again, there's no threat of any draw. There's no threat of any screen at this point. John Morris, the left offensive tackle, number 54, a junior from Houston, with the hold, trying to protect his quarterback, but he draws the penalty. And Miami now four for 31.
And that holding call is marked off from the spot of the foul. Wow, so they lost 10 yards plus. They lost a ton of yards there. Back at their own 27, and Charlie Williams will come into the ballgame at left tackle, replacing John Moore. Williams, number 79, a junior college All-America. First and 27. Guy on the delay. He's got some running room this time. Rolls over one tackler, gets up to the 35-yard line. The Dodgers and the Braves tomorrow night. Atlanta on a roll. 7.30 Eastern time, and then the White Sox and the Angels will follow that. And in the National League West, Atlanta will still have to play the Dodgers six straight times, but they lead by two in the loss count. Second and 18. Cougars, they're down 21-0, second quarter. Klingler with a quick toss to Gilbert. He's run out of bounds after he has maybe five. Darren Smith, who is the best defensive player on this Miami unit, forced him out of bounds. Klingler and his receivers particularly. Klingler has looked calm the entire game. His receivers look a little more composed. I guarantee you one thing. You're right. Uh, David Klinger just has to get something started here. But I'll tell you one thing. All the Southwest Conference teams are watching this game tonight, trying to figure out how Miami... They know they have great players is playing this 4-3 defense against the running shoot. Third and 13. In trouble again. That, that Caesar got him close on the running complete. Mark Caesar gets his second sack, and he just bull rushed his way into the Houston backfield. If you can't protect against four, a four-man rush, you're going to have problems all night. There is no flag. The quarterback's knee was down so it will go as a sack caesar gets his second one of the ball game he is the biggest defensive lineman at 290 the third miami sack of the game langston back onto the field he normally punts this much in about six months Williams waits inside his 20. 9.27 to go in the half. And it's been all Kane. Pretty punt. Williams back at the 18. Cuts it back, flag down. Tough man to bring down. He gets to the 28-yard line and another penalty on yet another return. It was a clip. 51-yard punt, 10-yard return, but they'll wipe that return out with this. Things seem to have settled down. That's fine if you're Miami. It's not fine if you're Houston. You're down 21. Holding on the return team, half the distance to the goal. First and 10. So Miami will be backed up. 9-11 to go. First half from the Orange Bowl. Miami 21, Houston nothing. Miami famous for a couple of things. Great weather and great defense. The hurricane warning. They invite anybody in here and whip them. 38 games in a row this club has won in the Orange Bowl. I mean, that is with the caliber of opposition they have played. That is a stunning win streak. It's been unbelievable. The run since Howard Snellenberger was here, of course, Lou Saban started building the program. Howard Snellenberger came in and really got it on the ground. And now Dennis Erickson has just kept it going. Mike Patrick, Mike Godfrey, Jerry Punch, Adrian Carson, our entire ESPN crew with you. Hope you've enjoyed the ball game so far. Miami takes over inside its own 10-yard line. McGuire cuts it back to the 17. Took a big shot from Darren Woods, the free safety, who was a great high school quarterback. But McGuire got it out about eight yards, and he has gained 56 yards on 11 carries so far tonight. There's Woods. Had six tackles in the opening game. Houston's defense has not played badly. They've been burned by a couple of big plays, but had excellent coverage on it. 
second and two. McGuire again, same play, takes it outside. And forced out of bounds by Glenn Cadre. What you'd like, if you're Miami, is to have a nice long drive. Take up some time, tack some more points on the board, and keep the offense on the sideline. But the way they're playing defensively, they might want the offense back on the field. You may have seen the uh, armband on the left arm of Glenn Cadrez. He is wearing that because his grandmother, Gladys Thomas, has been quite ill. We understand she's at home and uh, watching her grandson play tonight. And she, he wishes her well. Third and two. Miami trying to keep the drive alive. McGuire hit as they go with a run blitz, and they'll stop him short of the first down. Tyrone Davis, the right outside linebacker, who had such a sensational game against Louisiana Tech in this team's opener. There is no Good defensive serve. They've got Melvin and Ben sweating over there, the way they're playing this game. It's exactly what Houston had to have right there. Miami went with three runs. Backed up offense. Houston must get on the board. Yeah, they really need a lift. They need something positive before they go in at halftime. Parks waits at midfield. End over end. Turns into a spiral and Parks back at the 44. Strange looking kick. Parks after a 38 yard punt makes the fair catch. And Houston will start in good field position. I mean, this offense, this run and shoot just racks up the most incredible numbers you have ever seen. Look at that, yards per game. They've been fourth, first, and first in the last three years. And Miami has literally shut them down tonight. The yardage is that middle column instead of the one to the right. <laughs> <laughs> so Klingler, let's see what kind of adjustments they can make in this series. This is a big series. He, he needs to get something going. This kid is an exceptional quarterback. Make no mistake about it guy on the shovel pass and his knee touched down around the Miami 47 yard line they're trying to take control of this rush they're trying to do things that just try to offset the rush because Miami's front four Miami's taking one of their defensive ends and really widening him and he's causing pressure the defensive tackles are one's coming through the guard center gap the other one's coming through the guard tackle look at the left side see how wide the defensive end is Kevin Patrick it's giving problems to Houston, so they have to slow it down. They just slowed it down with a little pullback uh, shovel draw. Game nine on the last play, second and one. Guy on the carry, he'll have the first down to the Miami 43-yard line. You like to run a trap on offense when the defensive linemen are just pinning their ears back, and that's what they ran their trap play. It'll slow down the rush a little bit, but David Klinger, David Klinger still needs to throw the ball in about the 15-yard range up the field. 6.52 and counting, first half. Miami leads it by 21. Klingler with a little time to throw, and throws complete. Nearly another first down. Marcus Grant out of Dallas made the tackle. You can see Houston's confidence growing right now. And they did a good job on first and second downs. Here, here's the pass route. See the two receivers for Houston. Miami's doing a good job of knocking them off balance. It was an excellent job by Marcus Grant of once he made his cut to come back and make the play. Ryan McNeil, number 47 for Miami, is their best cover guy. We approach six minutes, first half. Houston at the 34. Klingler now 8 out of 17, 40 yards. Fake the trap. Nice play action by Klingler. Buys time. Throws. Catch or not outside the 10. It is not. Gilbert could not come up with it. I like that call. Rolled him out a little bit. Got him outside the rush, which will help again. Sometimes when a play goes bad, it's still good because you accomplish what you want. You slow down the rush. They need to do that. John Jenkins just needs to get him under control a little bit. Try to mix it up. Try to keep Miami off balance. Jenkins totally convinced about this offense. He says, you can't stop it if we run it right, but a four-man rush can sure do the job. Well, that's what Texas did when they beat him. They had a good four-man rush. Third and a yard. 
They'll throw the quick pass to Gilbert. Excellent speed. He'll get the first down, lost it out of bounds. But they'll mark it at the 31, and it will be a first down. The other thing the run and shoot likes is the fact that they get the ball to their receivers on little short routes like that. Then you take a receiver like Freddie Gilbert, and then you ask him to get by someone. But the difference tonight so far has been they're not getting by the Miami defensive secondary or linebackers. They're breaking down. They're not missing any tackles. Now, what Houston has to hope is that they tire them a little bit, and they start getting sloppy and miss some tackles. Gilbert has four catches but only for 16 yards and there are the stats minus one rushing but it is a first down here for Houston 543 to go in the half guy slips one tackle Armstead makes the short tackle of the 28 and Miami is very close to being lined up offside every play they have somebody with a helmet right over the ball Miami's making a good adjustment with their backside defensive end. They're taking him down inside, and the reason they're doing that is because everybody they talked to said you'll never get the quarterback when he rolls one way from the backside. So take him down inside. It's an adjustment that, again, Tom Tuberville felt like they should make tonight. Second and seven, and Houston trying to get somebody on the field is going to have to burn a timeout here. Stops the clock with 5.13 to go. The Cougars driving there at the Miami 28, but down by three scores. One nothing Miami, 5.13 to go in the half. Houston is driving. They have the ball at the Miami 27-yard line. Second and seven. Klingler will find somebody. You can count on him. Well, what they did is they rolled him out, and they used a wide receiver to come in and block for him. If you watch to the right, watch the wide receiver come inside. There he is. He's going to try to seal it. He makes the block on 71. David Klingler's outside, and that's where you're warning when the pass rush is tough. He could have ran for the first down, but he won the bigger play. Tracy Good, 170 against Caesar at 290. Wasn't much of a block, but he got in the what? Go for his feet. First and goal. And the Houston offense cannot hear. Guy. Not a chance. Kevin Patrick out of Lake Worth, Florida. An excellent pass rusher. Played the run very well that time. Watch Kevin Patrick, number 86, top of your screen. Works out, then works back inside. No one blocked him. Well, they just tried to sucker him that time. He didn't buy it. Kelly would be coming up inside after they ran the play action pass. Figured he might go for David Klingler. Second and goal from the seven. Gilbert couldn't hold it. Now here's the difference in Miami's defense and probably everybody else that's played against the run and shoot. You have Darren Smith, number 45, who's a linebacker on a wide receiver. Darren Smith, 6'1", 228, almost intercepts this ball. Watch Darren Smith. Here he comes. He works outside on the flat route. He almost took that football. Third and goal. A huge series for Houston. They have to score. to avoid the sack. Outstanding play. Rusty Medeiros, number 98, came from the backside. Put the pressure. Watch Rusty. Watch the wide rush right here coming from the outside. Beats the offensive tackle. David Klinger starting to try to come backside. He did a smart move because he didn't take the sack and he threw it away. He threw it out of bounds. Roman Anderson is on an outstanding kicker from 25 yards. He's an excellent short field goal kicker. 
Got that one inside the near post, and Houston gets on the board with 3.53 to go first half. Mike, I know they desperately wanted a touchdown, but they needed something on the board to give them a boost. They needed something good to happen. They got three points on the board, but if you're Miami again, when you bring that defense back over, you've got to tell them, hey, you did a great job, because Miami believes once you get the ball in the run and shoot inside the 10, the field shrinks on you, and you lose some of your routes. On the other side of the field, John Jenkins said in the 10-yard line, I love it. I love my opportunity to run picks, and against zone, I like the chance to run some routes where I get three receivers to one side. So Miami won that battle. Well, if Gilbert makes the catch, they have a shot at the touchdown, but they've had a couple of drop balls. Chris Fowler and Lee Corso with you every Saturday starting at 11.30 Eastern for College Football Game Day. And we have two fine games coming your way this Saturday. 12.30 Louisville and number 19 Ohio State. And then at 7.30, 16th ranked Alabama takes on number 6 Florida in Gainesville at Florida Field. Kevin Williams and Daryl Spencer will go deep to receive. 3.53 to go first down. Roman Anderson to kick off. Keep in mind that with this offense, if they can just slow down the pass rush a little bit, Houston can score in a hurry. Anderson, nice high sailing kick. Spencer at the five. Williams in front. Breaks the tackle, gets it out to the 30. 25-yard return. Let's check in with Adrian Karsten. Mike, one of the basic rules of defensive football when you're coming up on the ball is called a swim technique. You hit the man and you actually swim with your right arm over the offensive tackle. Lines of steam off the field is a swim or a rip technique when you come up underneath the offensive lineman's shoulder. These guys are getting beat on fundamentals. Their offensive line just got ripped for that reason. Thanks, Adrian. There is a penalty flag down on the return. On the return team, 10-yard penalty, first down. That'll make it all the way back to the 13-yard line. What Adrian was talking about there is a move the defensive line can use to try to get a pass rush. But, but you have to remember, Houston, Houston has six people blocking on the floor. They got the advantage. The four people are just doing a great job of getting in David Klingler's face. And they have been there since this game started. Fine first half for Toretta, 160 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns. See if Miami works on the clock again the way they did the last series. No, Toretta wants to go to the air. Deep over the middle and could have been intercepted. Two Houston players had shots at it, and he threw into triple coverage that time. Let's check in with Chris Fowler. All right, Mike, we are tracking the pennant races. The Dodgers are batting in the top of the 10th inning in the Astrodome, tied with the Astros 2-2. They must win or fall a game and a half back of the Braves, who've already won their seventh straight tonight. Keep you updated at halftime, plus our halftime blitz, the essential news for college football fans. Back to Miami. Thanks, Chris. And Strawberry's finally getting it done for the Dodgers, as Tommy Lasorda uh, said he would all year long. Total offense so far, Miami 213. Houston, 69 yards. That's usually the first series for Houston. <laughs> they needed that last interception. Darren Woods had that interception. I don't know whether he lost it in the lights or what. It just didn't seem like he saw the ball. Really, the first bad throw by Toretta. 25 seconds caught, did not start. We're going to reset it, and then we'll go from there. The game clock will start on the snap. 3.39 on that game clock. Now you can see the confidence that Dennis Erickson has in Toretta. I mean, the safe thing to do would be to run three plays and kick it out of there, but he came out throwing. You know, Toretta has waited his turn. He was recruited here by Gary Stevens, a former quarterback coach who coaches for the Miami Dolphins. An excellent coach. And he told him, he said, you have to wait your turn. Keep an eye on Martin Patton, number 32. They like to get him the ball when he comes in the lineup. Toretta instead goes to lose. Can't hold it. In front of Parks, who was a safety a year ago, and Kevin Williams just couldn't hold that toss. He also plays tailback. Williams broke Randall Hill's record here. He runs a 4-2-9-40. 4-2-9 is flying. Hey, the Houston receivers can feel it, too, because they're playing off and giving them a good cushion. They've, Gino Perrell's had some quick routes over there to his receivers. Kevin Williams, that one just was dropped. Third and ten. Big play here. And Dennis Erickson says, maybe the best crew of receivers that's ever been at Miami. That's saying a mouthful. Here comes the blitz. Toretta. Has time to unload, and Williams at the sideline made the catch. What a throw by Toretta. It took about 10 seconds to get there, but it got there. 
Miami's waiting on the blitz. Watch Patton, number 32. Martin Patton make a block, come over and make the key block that springs this play and gives Geno Tretta time to find Kevin Williams against man coverage. So they convert the third down. Williams has caught two passes so far, 54 yards and a touchdown. And the clock now becoming an ally of Miami, 328 to go in the half. Houston jumps, Miami moves. Let's see who did it first. It's a false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty, still first down. Not characteristic for Miami. They've been penalized quite a bit here in the first half. That was Leon Searcy, number 73. He's six foot three, 285 pounds, and I was talking to a couple of pro scouts down the sidelines before the game. They think he's an outstanding pro prospect, probably a first-round player. Really hasn't played much football. He's 160 pounds in the fifth grade. Nobody let him play with. I don't blame him. He's got a broken hand. He has a cast on tonight. First and 15. Another good block, and Toretta lays it up. Touchdown, Miami! Jerry Parks beaten by two steps, and Toretta threw it perfectly. A 71-yard touchdown. Remember what I said earlier, they were throwing, they were giving them good cushions, and they were throwing them the quick route. What Lamar Thomas did that time was stopped at five yards, quick hitch, the pump fake, Jerry Parks bid on it, Lamar Thomas went right by him. That might be a prophetic sign. The most automatic kicker in the history of college football is on for the point after. Huerta for his 149th straight PAT. And Miami raises the ante to 28-3. Watch Martin Patton again, the running back. When you're, if you're going to be successful against the blitz, the back has to be able to pick up. Here he picks up Lorenzo Dixon. Good block. Keeps Gino Toretta. Gives him the time enough to run the takeoff route. Here you see another angle. There's the key block. Gino Toretta has all night to throw that football. Boy, and if you're going to play in a one-back offense, that one-back has to be able to pick up the blitz like that. And Patton did it two games in a row. Watch Lamar Thomas right here. Fake. Jerry Parks takes the bite, and then he takes off and gets this touchdown pass. Watch Jerry Parks just stop on the fake. Just long enough for Lamar Thomas to run by him. That's what that quick hitch will do. It sets up the hitch and go. Dennis Erickson said, when they blitz, we have to burn them, and they have. Toretta, 252 yards through the air and three touchdowns. A lot of fire here tonight in the first half. Oh. But very little of it from Houston, which is what the Miami defensive coaches expected. They didn't think they could shut them down. Three deep arrangement for Houston. Tracy Good from the goal line. Got a hole. Flag is down. The starting flanker playing special teams, and he drilled it. And it will be a clip against Houston. And that clip was well after the return man. He'd gone 10, 15 yards downfield when that penalty flag was thrown. Let's see if we can hear the hit that Kevin Williams laid on Tracy Good. in the crowd and this crowd's been a factor tonight they've been loud encouraging the Miami team no wonder 28 to 3 so this penalty instead of being out around the 40 yard line Houston will be inside its own 10 and now they have to go more than 90 yards to score down 28 3 of course you know they'll throw it down here that's what they do Miami, Miami wants to Tommy keep... Guy behind him. Excuse me, Mike. Miami wants to keep everything in front of him. 
guy on the delay. Another flag is down. The officials whistle the play dead. John Jenkins just like to get to the locker room right now. That ball, ball starts. Lineman picked up before the snap. And you can hardly blame the Houston lineman for wanting to get a head start. Big games. Miami's had them. The experience in the Orange Bowl, 38 straight. They have to do some retooling at halftime with a run and shoot. They have to put some ammunition in that gun. They've been able to rest their defensive line. They're back in now with a second team defensive tackle. Penalty makes it first and 15. Ball spotted at the four. Klingler will have to throw out of his end zone. Block right in his face. And you have to be careful when you're back there. A penalty could result in safety. Or that pass rush could result in a safety. Anthony Hamlet out of Delray Beach, which is near Daytona. Anthony Hamlet is a defensive end. Because they wanted to try to get more of a pass rush tonight, they moved him down to play defensive tackle. It's been a good move tonight for Miami, what they've been able to do with Anthony Hamlet moving down a position. One more, three defensive ends in the game. Klingler now 10 out of 22, but only 65 yards. Here's the blitz. They pick it up. Klingler sidearm gets it to Gilbert, and he is thrilled as he got to the 11. Jesse Armstead and Darren Smith hit him. Armstead has had an injury played career here. He really tore up his right knee. As a high school senior, the most recruited linebacker in the country, he almost didn't get past the age of 13. He was attacked in his neighborhood and stabbed with a butcher knife. They said he'd never play again. Well, he's playing. Third and seven. Another blitz. Klingler hangs in there to Gilbert. And Freddie Gilbert with speed to burn, cuts it outside, huge play for Houston, and Gilbert gets up to the 30. There is another penalty flag down, this one is back at the five. Holding. Well, you have to wonder what else could go wrong for the Cougars and David Klingler. Miami brought the linebacker Michael Barrow on that last play. Watch right here, the right defensive tackle. That's where the holding's called, Mark Caesar. See Michael Barrow on the blitz. There's the hold on Mark Caesar. Everything has went wrong for David Klingler in his offense. You really got to admire Klingler with the pressure he has been under. The young man has done the best he could do. Like on the last play, he had somebody draped all over his leg. Still got the completion. A lot of penalties, first half. Third and 16, Houston in a world of trouble. Klingler airs this one out, had a man open and overthrew him that time. Marcus Grant down the sideline. And Houston will have to kick it away. Fine coverage by Daryl Williams. A very, very fast safety. 4-3, four, 4 speed. Outstanding athlete. Miami defense, I can't say enough for the job they've done. Their coaches, the scheme that they're running, the way they're breaking on the ball, the pressure they get. And now Miami with 2.13 to go in the half should have an excellent shot at being able to score again as Williams waits for the punt at midfield. And you notice one thing, as exceptional as they have been, no taunting, no showboating, no nothing. They've done it the way their coaches have asked them to do it. And they snapped it over the head of the punter. That will be a safety. Well, we wondered what else could go wrong. That was it. In the run and shoot offense, and the way Houston plays defense on John Jenkins, they want to put pressure on. But what has happened is Miami has pressured them in every area. And it's just a bad snap. There's no one even on the center. He just snapped it over his head. Tyler Mucho was the snapper, and he got it closer to Fort Lauderdale than he did his punt. 
and now it is 30 to 3. I don't think anybody envisioned this. Certainly not the Miami coaches. They were not the most confident group of people we have met. No, they were concerned all week. They were concerned about defense. They, they have a lot of respect for David Klingler. Concerned whether their offense could control the ball, but everything has went right for Miami. It's a great game plan by Dennis Erickson and the staff. The players have played hard. They've been in the right position. Houston has shot themselves in the foot rather than shooting uh, to get points. They've shot themselves in the foot. Too many penalties, too many mistakes, and they've, they've just never settled down, Mike, on either offense or defense. And right now, just your mental adjustment is the thing that's the biggest problem here. You're down 30 to 3 with 202 to go in the half, and this crowd is just rubbing it in. Biggest problem is keeping Miami out of the end zone before you go in the half. Langston will do the honors on the free kick. Williams and Spencer are deep to take it. And Williams, we've already seen how dangerous he is. From the Still on his feet, breaking tackle to the 49. Williams is only 5'9", 185, but he is a strong young man, a return of 22. Game day comes your way this Sunday. Starting at noon, Chris, Tom, and Joe bring you up to date on everything that's going to happen in the NFL that day. And then at 7 o'clock, back for prime time and highlights of all the games. And it's already been a wacky season, only two weeks into it. It has been a long first half for the men in red and white. Not for Gino Toretta. He's had a ball here in the first half. Here comes the blitz. Toretta unloads again. This time, nobody home. And I think he knew there was nobody in that third of the field. That's where he wanted to put the ball. Kenny Perry coming hard on the blitz. Kenny, Bear Kenny Perry, number eight. Strong safety will be coming from the right side of your screen. Good rush. Beats the block of the tight end. They kept the tight end in the running back in the block and just have a two-receiver route throwing the ball deep. 150 to go in the first half. Toretta 10 out of 18. He's thrown three touchdown passes here in the first two periods. Toretta has time, gets it to Thomas. Double team. Drilled out of bounds at the 40. Boy, he took a shot there. We have number 36. Lamar Thomas. Ryan McCoy. Dumped him out of bounds. Cadrez was also over there on the cover. Mike, watch the offensive line of Miami. In contrast to the way Houston is protecting their quarterback, look at that protection. Just a quick hitch, but again, no one is able to get the Geno credit. That's the difference. Houston has had the blitz to apply any pressure. Miami has come with a straight four-man rush and eaten up Houston's offensive line. It is a first down. Thomas now five catches, 119 yards in the half. He said like Houston numbers, another blitz. And Toretta, once again, simply threw the ball away to avoid the sack. Yeah. And that really takes something from a quarterback. Most quarterbacks really value their statistics. They don't like to throw the ball away. They'd like to come out and be 14 for 14 and five touchdowns. But Toretta has thrown the ball away three or four times rather than make a bad play. Most of the time when they face a blitz, the, the, the receiver that's open is the inside receiver. They'll run him on an out route. Watch Kevin Williams. This particular play, Daryl Spencer. They're both inside receivers. They should be the people he goes to. Another blitz. Toretta floats this one up for Bell. He can't hold it. But there's a flag down. And Eric Blunt, the linebacker, was on the coverage, and this one looks like interference. He went backside to the tight end, away from the three receivers. And Coleman Bell looked like he was held by Eric Blunt. Number 42, Eric Blunt. Holding penalties, holding on the offense on the line of scrimmage. They have holding on the defense against the receiver. They offset. Play it again. That's a break for Houston. One of the few they've had, certainly, in the first half. And John now, Jenkins talking Austin. with David Klingler. Now, a lot of frustration. John Jenkins gives him the, the 
challenge to audible. He likes to audible not away from a bad play, but into a good play against the defense he sees. But tonight he hasn't seen anything that he feels like he can get the ball in. And Klingler hasn't seen anything but orange jerseys right in his face. Second and ten. Patton the man in motion. Five-man rush. They go with the blitz, and that pass is short. Darrell Spencer coming on the slant and had him wide open and missed him that time. A lot of dejection on that bench. You're watching Thursday night CFA on ESPN, and what was billed as a high-scoring game for both teams has been a high-scoring game for one. Miami leading 30-3 to over Houston. We keep saying that run and shoot is that explosive offense that can get a lot of points, but you eventually reach the point where you know they're not going to get any, and we are getting close to that. They have been dominating. And Miami wants a timeout with 1.28 to go first half. They're facing a third and ten. The Canes will have two timeouts left. There's Toretta, the young man out of Penola, California. Coming up at halftime, Chris Fowler will be in the studio and have all the scores of Major League Baseball. Highlights, update the pennant racing course for you, especially the uh, Dodgers and the Braves and the National League West. And we'll have our halftime blitz as Mike Gottfried and all of our other college football analysts will come on to tell you what's going on in college football this week. And then Mike, uh, who works triple duty on these games, will be back with his analysis of this one. Mike, interesting. When Howard Snellenberger was here, Gary Stevens was the offensive coordinator. They ran a two-back offense with great success. Jimmy Johnson came in for three defense and kept the same offense. Gary Stevens ran the offense. He was the offensive coordinator. Dennis Erickson came in changed the offense went to a single back offense three receivers but it's still been very successful but stayed with the four three defense kept tom tuberville over kept the same defense and so he made some changes but still successful you'd stay with the two wouldn't you yeah. <laughs> yeah these guys tomorrow next week next year five years from now same thing third and ten no matter how many guys they lose in the draft there always seems to be somebody else right behind them Miami not being shy about it. Toretta under pressure. Has time, throws, and once again, just threw that one away. Intended for Spencer. Good coverage by Kenny Perry, the strong safety. Watch a defensive line try to use some line twist to try to get open. There's the tackle going outside. In comes inside, comes free. Gino Toretta avoids the rush and throws the ball away. Houston's keeping their regular defense on for a fake. 121 left. That's Parks back at the 10. But Snyder is on, and he will kick it. High sailing punt. Parks lets it go over his head, and Miami will bound inside the five. It's hard to imagine anyone having better special teams than the Miami Hurricanes. The Miami Hurricanes did a great job on punt coverage because they just went down to the goal line, turned around, and caught the football. Keep Houston in the hole. Well, I don't think the uh, subject of running it up is going to come up tonight, <laughs> do you? Well, it could. <laughs> the other, the other way. way. 30-3 to three with 1-12 to go. I don't think there's any way they'll sit on it. I think they'll try to throw the ball downfield. Well, they say they can't. They can't sit on it. This is the offense. Klingler shovel pass to Guy. And now they'll blow the whistle and say Guy's knee touched. Well, I tell you again, when th things go bad, you got a pretty good play, and your fullback knee hits the ground, and you don't pick up any yard. There's a shovel draw again. Watch David Klingler come this way. Watch him flip the ball underneath to the fullback. They're not blocking that outside receiver. His knee did hit the ground. There has been a hesitation with everybody that has played superback so far for Houston. They get the ball, and it's like they expect to be leveled the minute they touch it. And that time, Guy sort of scrunched up his shoulders like, where is the defense? Second and 12, clock running. We're down to 29 seconds. Guy on the delay. He'll get out to maybe the five-yard line. Upended by Armstead. Gather your troops. Go, to the, go into the locker room and try to figure out what you can do in the second half. Let this clock run down and get out of here. Miami may force them. Now they're going to let them let the clock run.
Down to four seconds. And Klingler will get off a play just as the half ends, and now they blow the play dead. And he did not get it off. Really a, uh, an appropriate ending for Houston in this half. Very few things went right. One field goal, they're down 30 to three. Let's go to Adrian Karsten. Coach, is it the run and shoot just isn't executing, or is it Miami is just that much better on both sides oh. of the ball? Hey, it's a combination of both, for sure. We, we, you know, we can't sustain things as far as getting penalties on offense, and hey, they're doing a great job. We just gotta get things turned back around for the second half. Is the offensive line just getting blown off the ball? They seem stunned. Well, you know, we're uh, we're getting a lot of holding penalties and this type of thing for, you know, that, that's been able to neutralize a lot of our drives. Thank you, Coach. Good luck second half. Mike. Adrian, thank you. We're at halftime, 30 to three. Chris Fowler will be back right after you listen to these messages. Right, our score at halftime, Miami dominating Houston 30 to three. Probably the thing that's most reflective, 316 yards to 76 yards in total offense. The kind of things that Houston usually does to other people have been done to them tonight. When we talked to Dennis Erickson earlier in the week, he said there were two keys to this one, Mike Gottfried. One was getting pressure out of a four-man rush, and the other was taking advantage of the opportunities when they had them against the Houston defense when they blitzed. Well, Dennis Erickson's a prophet because they did both. Well, they knew exactly what they had to do. First of all, they had to get a rush out of their front four. They had to get pressure on the quarterback. Watch the wide rush of the defensive end. Watch the cross done in the middle. And then watch Rusty Medeiros come up inside. Watch the pressure that they get right away from the snap of the ball. That's with just four people rushing the pressure that they've been able to get on David Klingler. If you can get four people on him, you don't need to commit backers and you don't need to do anything but play zone coverage. Now, here's where Miami's done a great job. Martin Patton, the back, being able to pick up the blitz. Got all day to throw, they get the big play. All right, let's take a look at how the two quarterbacks did in the first half, and it has been uh, Gino Toretta, who has had the exceptional first half, 11 out of 22. Uh, 263 yards, three touchdowns. Klingler, 12 out of 25, only 71 yards. But in Klingler's defense, if you can go 1-1,000 when a 280-pound defensive end hits you in the face, you don't have a chance. I don't care who you are. Well, I think you're going to find out something about David Klingler in the second half, and I think you're going to find out something about the run and shoot, and you're going to find out about the Houston Cougars if they can come back and play in the second half. There's still time. They need to relax. They need to let themselves get it back in this ballgame. There's a lot riding on this Houston's national image, and, of course, Klingler's shot in the Heisman Trophy race. We'll be back with the second half kickoff in just a moment. Orange Bowl. And it's 30 to three, Miami over Houston. Let's go to the sideline and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, you would never know Dennis Erickson has a 27 point lead. He is such an intense individual. He was literally shaking as he walked off the field and shaking again as he came back on. He told me, he told his team at halftime, guys, above all, do not look at the scoreboard. This guy, David Klingler, can really hurt us. In fact, one of the defensive coaches told his team sort of tongue-in-cheek, remember, this is a team we're playing who thinks the Hail Mary is a short yardage play. Let's go to Adrian Karsten. Well, I'll tell you what, Jerry, if that's what they said in, uh, over the Miami locker room, this is what came out of the Houston locker room. They said, go out, forget it. The score is 0-0. Zero, zero. Play it like it's the Astrodome. <laughs> this place is not like the Astrodome. There's no roof, Adrian. <laughs> Hey, you coaches do say some strange things. Don't look at the scoreboard. I'm sure the Miami players said, yeah, right, coach. Well, if I was John Jenkins, I'd say don't look at the scoreboard. Yeah. I, I, but I think, you know, again, we're going to find something about this ball club right here in Houston. I think this is an important half for them as a football team. It's a young season. They need to come together and need some positive things to happen. And we should find out in a hurry because the Cougars will get the football first. Where it's kicking off. Taken by Keandre Sanders, trying to get to the outside, speed against speed, and he turns the corner, another flag is down. And I don't know if Houston has returned one kick tonight if there has not been a penalty flag. They've really put themselves in a hole with these penalties. Instead of having the ball close to the 30-yard line, he backed up. Casey Greer made the stop. That's not the way after you get a big emotional pep talk to come out and start out. Calling. 
on the return team, first down. The halftime stats reflective of what Miami has done to the Houston Cougars. Look at the passing yards for Houston. 71 yards. A week ago in their opener, they threw for 630 against the Louisiana Tech team that had beaten two bowl teams last year and had virtually its entire defense cut. Klingler will have to start at his own eight-yard line. Five-man rush on the blitz. They don't get there, and the pass is complete out to about the 16. That's where they mark it. Fred Gilbert makes another catch. You know, some things happen bad to them here early. They might start to go back to the huddle. They may need to regroup a little bit in the huddle. They're going with the no huddle again. John knows he wants to try to get some plays off, and a number of plays off, but the noise factor is really bothering him. Gilbert has seven catches, 52 yards. That would have been the eighth, but he bobbled it, and he was drilled by Herbert James, the senior out of Miami. Gilbert has dropped a couple of balls tonight, as have a couple of his teammates. Again, there's an uncovered receiver. You see Jesse Armstead in set, inside. That's why the throw was out there quick. But just a great play by the corner, Herbert James. And did you see where Gilbert's eyes were focused on Armstead and not the football? Houston has converted only two of nine third down. Guy on the draw. Fumble. Houston has it. They would have fumbled that one. You could have packed the bus up. <laughs> you bet. As it is, they may have gotten the first down out of it and did at the 20-yard line. So one of the few breaks the Cougars have had, recovered by John Morris, the left tackle. They haven't. Houston has not been able to catch anything over the middle. Everything's been outside or quick passes. 94. Four-man rush. Klingler, Chase, trying to run. Look at the speed. Just burning speed. Herbert James came up. I mean, they just close on you. So incredible. Just so much speed. Here again, the rush bothers David Klingler. Just a straight drop back pass. You see the rush forcing him out of the pocket. He's heading for the corner of Herbert James, who's a Deep cornerback came up and made the play. Klingler has 4 6 5, 40 speed, which is excellent for a quarterback. Randall Cunningham was timed in 4 7 when he was in college. I'll tell you how fast James is. Second and seven, it was a game of three. Pressure, they throw it to Guy, and Guy ran into his own blocker who was being forced back by a defensive lineman. The shovel pass has not been their best play. No, their offense is out of sync. It, it, again, they've not been able to work the ball downfield. Everything's been short. But again, there's a reason for that. The reason for that is the four-man rush doesn't allow them the time to get the routes up the field. There's no substitute for pressure on the quarterback, and they're getting it done with four men. Klingler has thrown for only 79 yards. Third and seven. He'll have to run and doesn't get much. Caesar hustling all the way across the field, shoved him out of bounds after Kevin Patrick got the initial pressure. And once again, Houston fails to move the ball very far. You wonder why David Klingler can't find anything. It's because Miami has done such a good job of underneath coverage. Watch David Klinger. There's a reason he's not throwing. Look at the underneath coverage. They're rerouting the receivers. They're, they have speed to stay with them. And that's why he's running the football out of bounds. Great team speed has always been the key to this Miami ball club since Howard Schnellenberg is here. Langston to punt. Nice kick. Williams lets it bounce. And it's down by Houston special teams at the 38 yard line. He's now at the 38 yard line. 41-yard punt, no return. It's been a tough night for the Heisman candidate, David Klingler. But Gino Toretta has had it all his way. He's made the right decisions, thrown one pass that can be considered risky, hit three touchdowns, everything you've asked of him. One team's been poised, the other team hasn't been tonight. 
McGuire is the single setback behind Coretta. McGuire will get the carry. Nice cut to get a couple of yards. James Bevel will make the stop along with Tyrone Davis. Houston jumped into an eight-man front defense on the first play. Still, Miami was able to pick up three yards, running against eight people. Steve McGuire has done a good job carrying the football tonight. Sure has. Martin Patton to give him the speed outside. And a great block. McGuire's gained 60 yards, averaging more than four yards of carry. Coretta straight back to throw, short drop, goes to Thomas. Nice move to get a run. Thomas to the fourth. Well, he left John W. Brown Take it by with an arm full of air. Darren Lamar Woods had Thomas. to make the tackle, and Thomas at 6'3", 170. Five, and it sort of hits you at the end. Eight-man front, you've got to be a little tighter on the receiver. See, the John Brown's giving him too much room. Lamar Thomas then makes a move. That's what the Houston receivers are used to doing. Getting the defensive backs tired, getting them sloppy in their tackles, and that's what's happening on the other side of the ball. The Houston DBs cannot match up with the Miami receivers. Thomas, six carries, 138 yards, two score. McGuire, up to that side. McGuire doesn't look McGuire, like he's doing a whole lot, way. but at the end of the play, he has four or five yards. Tyrone Davis made the stop. Stop by Tyrone Davis. Tailback counter play, where direction goes one way to affect the linebackers. Watch the pulling tackle and guard. Good block by Leon Searcy. There's a good kick out block. Daryl Spencer does a good move here for Miami. He doesn't try to block. He would have clipped. Game good five, guard. second and five. Our score, if you join us late, 30 to three. Miami has dominated, especially on defense. And Toretta has been superb. Here comes the blitz. They don't get there. Thomas inbounds at the 17. Got a foot down. And once again, Toretta takes the heat of the blitz, lays the ball up so somebody can catch it. There is a marker down. Boy, John Brown's got problems. Personal problem. Against Miami. Lamar Thomas is just having a field day over here. There you see the eight-man front and the pressure, which means there's man-to-man -man coverage right here. On the snap of the ball, he's trying to stay with Lamar Thomas, but Lamar gives him a little move. John Brown bites on the move, and he gets behind him again. Watch this move. Just to stop, just long enough to get his arm over and to get free and to make the catch. Watch the concentration. I'm not sure he had the football. Not sure he did either. Good concentration, but I'm not sure he brought it in. He did get the foot down, but you're supposed to take the ball with you, but it comes Second back down. on the personal and foul 21. in any event. Second and 21 now from for Miami from their own 40 yards. Houston desperately needs a big play on defense. Well, those DBs are on like islands right now, and Miami's just eating them up. And you don't want to be on an island when there's a hurricane coming. Here's Williams. Flanker screen. Goodbye. Touchdown. Beautifully designed and executed. Speed, speed, speed. They took three receivers and put them to the field. On the snap of the ball, they took two of the wide receivers and ran them off downfield. Kevin Williams came back inside for the middle screen. Fifty-one yard touchdown pass. Williams second of the night. And Toretta has been superb. Huerta for the point after. Drills another one through. Four touchdown passes in less than three quarters for Gino Toretta. It's 37-3. ESPN's Thursday night CFA Houston and Miami is brought to you by Isuzu. For feature styling and price, there's no comparison. And by Sharp Electronics Corporation. From Sharp Vines come Sharp Products. 37-3 Miami over Houston. The Canes kicking off. 
Holt, Good, and Sanders are deep. Another good kick by Huerta. Good from the three. Buried as he reaches the 33-yard line. Mike, let's go back to that last touchdown. What Miami did is put all three receivers. Lamar is going to come. Williams going to come back inside, but watch Kevin Williams. But watch the pick right here on man coverage. Watch the middle receiver come back. There's the pick right there. There's the middle screen. Kevin Williams. Touchdown City. Well, you can't throw a block. You cannot hit a defender when the ball's in the air. That's uh, That was a pick all the way. But it sure was pretty. And now Klingler in a lot of trouble. Toretta has thrown for 333 yards and four touchdowns. Klingler behind DeAndre Sanders. He was coming out of the backfield. DeAndre Sanders. Houston came in here with a dream tonight. They wanted to show people all over the country that this just wasn't a Southwest Conference power. It was a team that could play with anybody in the country. And against a defense like Miami's with the great athletes they have, they went to sleep waiting for that dream, and Freddy Krueger showed up instead. It's been a nightmare for John Jenkins. Klingler, 13 out of 29, only 79 yards. Quickly to Brown, ducks the tackle, and then he stops at the 38. Number four. James and Armstead made the stop. Again, Miami will just give them that pass all night. They have to throw the ball downfield. They're just not able. This is just a checkoff to the uncovered receiver. Jesse Armstead comes over. Herbert James right away to make the tackle. But, Mike, if you're Klingler, you go to the sideline saying, that's the only pass I can throw, coach. He's running the system because he just doesn't have time. Again, the quick pass, Gilbert. That's what he does best, make people miss, and Gilbert's across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Well, when you're behind 37-3, it takes a long, lot of those passes to get you back in this ballgame. 9.51 to go third quarter. We are rapidly gaining on the, uh, the three-hour mark in this game. Houston plays a lot of games that are close to four hours in one. Faker makes real pass this time. Can't find anybody. Now he wants to run. He's got yardage. Has the first down. Gets out of bounds. In front of Michael Barrow, the middle linebacker. Next week, Virginia at Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets are 17th. Talk about a team shooting itself in the foot. They did that against an excellent Penn State team in the opener. Not that Penn State wouldn't have won in any regard with Georgia Tech made more mistakes in one game than they made all of last year when they shared the national championship. And future opponents can't expect that kind of gift. Klingler, dangerous pass. Sanders can't make the catch. Nothing they're doing is surprising Miami at all. No, they're, again, they're just short passes, and Miami's breaking up on the ball, and they really haven't ch challenged Miami deep. But again, you know, you keep you keep talking about this. It's very difficult. The best pass defense any team can play, and Dennis Erickson's team's doing it tonight. Is a pass rush. You don't have time. You're just not going to be able to do passes. Last team that held this club under 350 yards. Guess who? Dennis Erickson. He was at Washington State. Gilbert. Fires a nice screen play, and Gilbert gets it all the way down to the 30-yard line. But once again, you can see the Miami speed closing on defense, even with a well-designed play. And a guy like Gilbert who can fly. Similar play that Miami ran for the touchdown. Watch Michael Barrow, number 56. It's caught inside. Now he sees screen. Watch him come back and help make the play. I recruited his brother. He's out of Homestead, Florida. Carlos Farrell off the University of Kansas. Now that's a middle linebacker chasing down an extremely fast wide receiver from behind. Klinger in trouble. Flag down. Maybe a face man. Eric Miller, number 95, got to Klingler. It also looked like uh, Lopez was in there. In that fresh defensive lineman, Kenny Lopez is a 6'3", 270-pound backup defensive tackle. And it is a face man. 
long evening on this sideline of Houston. Face mask, five yards, first and five. Watch David Klinger. There's the face mask. Kenny Lopez. He just didn't grab it. He, he turned around. Surprised they only called five yards. But he hung on for a while, but it's first and five for Houston. The fans don't want to see the Cougars score. They want to see that Miami defense keep them out of the end zone. Guy got a yard and no more. Number 98, Rusty Medeiros, played it very well from his defensive end spot, the sophomore from Ozark, Missouri. And his receiver been forced out of bounds. John Brown, the third. And nice coverage out there again by the Miami secondary. Mike, I talked to one of the defensive coordinators in the Southwest Conference, and he felt like the player that Houston would miss most was Chuck Weatherspoon, the S back last year. Yeah. He did so much for John Jenkins in running the football. They're, they're playing four players at the S back. But when you lose a player of his ability, it really affects your offense. But even if Chuck Weatherspoon was here tonight, they'd have trouble. If John Riggins was here tonight, they'd have trouble. Klingler throws. Flag is down. John Brown, the third, and his offensive lineman, Charlie Williams, number 79, as they tried to get a screen out there. Penalty is going to go against Miami. Charlie Williams, the offensive tackle who was trying to get out for the screen, nearly ran over his own receiver. John Brown, the third, was nearly trampled. Personal foul, roughing the passer on the defense. First Late down. hit on Klingler. They just can't hold Miami out. They call this roughing on Anthony Hamlet, number 97. Watch Hamlet come in. Here's the play. Oh, he sticks yeah. his helmet in his helmet back. Helmet in the back. Miami's been penalized 12 times, 107 yards. Houston has eight penalties tonight. It's a first down Cougars. Klingler sidearms this one too high for Gilbert. And good coverage back there, especially Hurley Brown. And this will be holding against Houston. Rusty Medeiros was applying pressure, and that's the look that John Jenkins has had most of the night. It doesn't surprise me the way they're getting by the offensive line. They have to grab them try to slow him down. Darrell Williams a free safety. Number 31. Dennis Erickson told me maybe as good as Benny Blades. That's good. Holding. Offense. Still first down. You feel for Klingler a little bit. He is a quality quarterback who is going to be one of the top draft choices in the National Football League. But he's just taken a beating tonight. People who are watching this game, obviously the question is going to come up, how does this affect the Heisman Trophy race? How does it? Well, I think that Casey Weldon and some other people are going to move up. And not ahead of him, but they're going to move up. This is it. Now all of a sudden it's going to be a crowded party. Movement on the Houston offensive line. John Morris, the left tackle, got a quick start. There's no play. We have movement before the snap on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Mike, I want to say something though. When, in David Kruger's defense, if you're a quarterback in any other offense and you're having a bad night or your team's having a bad night, other people can carry you. When you, when things are going bad in the run and shoot because you're the focal point, whether it's you're having a bad night or your offensive line's having a bad night, I mean, it looks bad for you because yeah. you are the trigger man. You're the guy who's going to have the 700-yard passing nights, but also when things go bad, you're going to look bad. Exactly. First and 34. Houston is rapidly going in the wrong direction. Klingler under pressure again, throws deep, out of bounds, intended for John Brown the third, double covered. Klingler took another shot as he unloaded. 
Watch Darrell Williams, number 31, just sitting on the hash, waiting for a receiver, and then he breaks on the ball. He's in pretty good shape. That's Jesse Armstead, a linebacker, running with the wide receiver. Darrell Williams. Again, unbelievable speed from these linebackers. Good size, 6'2", 190, run. Makes the defensive secondary calls. Klingler has averaged 2.9 yards per attempted pass tonight. Fake, Klingler gets away, nearly lost his jersey in the process. Throws, Gilbert can't get there. Nearly intercepted by Ryan McNeil. There's another flag down. And a Houston player is hurt. This will be the 23rd penalty of this game. It's a clip against Houston. Kenny Lopez, the Miami defensive tackle, is the injured player. The clipping penalty against Houston. Just a total mismatch in the offensive line of Houston, defensive line Miami. Really being eaten alive at this point. Clipping on the offense. Second out. Dodgers and the Braves tomorrow night. Major League Baseball, our exclusive coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern. What a great race in the National League West. The Braves, the surprise of the league this year, the Chicago White Sox, and the California Angels will follow the Dodgers and Braves game. And there are the standings. The Dodgers, two, bay, two games back in the last column. They will meet the Braves head-to-head -head six times before the end of the year. And mark this ball all the way back to the Houston 43. Let's see if we can see the injury. There you see Kenny Lopez get hit low. Looked like it right on the side of the knee, and Lopez is being helped off the field. Never saw it coming. No. It is now. These are the plays coaches never call. Second and 54. You might as well just air it out, throw it as far as you can. Houston needs to get to the Miami three to get a first down. Klingler guns this one, complete to Grant, breaks the tackle, breaks two, and gets down to the 33. That's a big play. They still have 30 yards to go. It's interesting what Miami's done tonight by moving Anthony Hamlet down inside. As I said earlier, the 4-3 defense predicated on that you have good defensive tackles, and they move Anthony Hamlet down as a defensive end. What you usually do, and Miami does with their defensive ends, they take players who are high school linebackers and move them to defensive end. Very active front four. Michael Barrow came up limping on that play, as did Herbert James. So Miami has had three players limp off the field in two plays. It was the biggest play Houston has had tonight. And this is an offense that just generates one big play after another. Third and 30. Another flag is down. It will be another hold. The pass intended for Grant incomplete. And Matt Britton, number 99, was downfield in pass coverage. He came back from one of the most devastating knee injuries anybody has ever seen. He had eight hours of surgery on that knee. Eight hours. I mean, that's incredible with the techniques they have these days. He has to have that leg tape 45 minutes before every game. We just had a good pass for us. David Klingler is just really frustrated. Just has had, hasn't had time. Has not thrown the ball well at times when he really right. has had an opportunity to throw. Well, you need to develop a rhythm, and he's never had the chance to do that tonight. They turned down the holding call to bring up fourth and 30. At this point, he's just going to keep his offense on and fourth down, try to get pick up the first down. 6.52 to go third quarter. The Miami players trying to get the fans to their feet. And it's working. When we're under pressure, goes to Guy on the little delay. Guy breaks one tackle, brought down by Darren Smith. Guess what? There's another penalty flag down. Offsides, defense. 
Well, this will give Houston another shot. It will be fourth and 25. They were obviously far short of the first down. Guy is someone, uh, a young player, only a sophomore. He's still learning the system, and it's very obvious he doesn't have a great deal of confidence uh, in that play or what he's doing right now. He has real hesitant. He has been really hesitant uh, every time he has caught that little shovel pass in the short screen. He has. He just when you roll four people in at times, it'll take a while for somebody to establish themselves at that position. Fourth and 25. Houston gets another shot. They need to reach the three-yard line for a first down. Four-man rush for once. Not a lot of pressure. Gilbert caught it, but he is crushed at the 11-yard line. That will be short of a first down. And that's one of the reasons he was open over the middle, because the Miami defense is laying back saying, you're not going to get the 30 yards to get the first down. 6.35 to go in the quarter. Miami leads by 34. Print. Houston, three. And when we get to the other side of the scoreboard, that's not a misprint either. Miami, 37. And that says it all. 6.35 to go third quarter. Miami backed up for one of the few times tonight. From its own 11. McGuire behind Ferretta. McGuire will get the carry. No room there. Sit down on the sideline and Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Thank you very much, Mike. Kenny Lopez, the sophomore, third-year sophomore defensive tackle, is being strapped to a card here along the bench, and they will carry him into the locker room. I spoke to team orthopedist John Uribe a minute ago. He thinks he may have strained the medial ligament. That's the inside ligament to his right knee from being cut on the outside. They're going to take him in, take the pads off, and get a good, long, hard look at him. A tough break for the young man who will play no more tonight. Jerry, thanks very much. Your expertise on the sideline, always welcome. Six minutes to go, third period. Toretta doesn't hesitate to drop back and throw. And guns this one deep down the sideline. Lamar Thomas was the intended receiver, but about five yards short. If those of you who have tuned in for baseball tonight, it is now 11 o'clock, and get yourself another cup of Bosco, because we're going to be here a while. We've got 5.54 to go in the third quarter. Baseball tonight will be on an old San hour and a half. I'm sorry, Sports Center will come on first and baseball tonight will be up in about two hours third and ten Toretto with time rifle complete Thomas has it first down at the 23 more penalty flags holding this will go against Miami Mike Gottfried, I know neither one of us, uh, brilliant as we are, <laughs> expected this. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <I'm brilliant. laughs> uh, this has really been uh, a tribute to the Miami Hurricanes, uh, their coaches and their players, the way they've prepared for this. Because they've done it in every possible way that you can think of. They have won every battle. And obviously, they've won the war. Great thing about it, like Dennis Erickson said, he doesn't play for 16 days. If you win, you're a lot happier in those 16 days till the next game. Third and 17 now for Miami. Toretta airs it out. Could be intercepted. It is picked off. Wood back to the 30. 20. There's another flag down. Wood has a chance to go. Got to the five-yard line. And he was nailed by Leon Searcy, the big offensive tackle. Holy cow. He took the wrong turn. He oh. went to the right. He would have scored a touchdown. Instead, he ran into that guy. Oh. Leon Searcy. Wrong man. Gino Toretta, one of the few bad passes he's thrown tonight. Picked off by Darren Woods. Now watch Darren Woods. There's a good block right there on number 36, Lamar Thomas. Now watch him break it outside. Now if he stays outside, he's going to score. Instead, he says, where's Leon? <laughs> He found him. Let's check the penalty here, though. Watch this. Watch what he sees. Oh, I wish I would have went to the right.
holding against Houston. The ball was in the air. No turnover. Miami's ball. Well, just when you think it couldn't get worse, it does. What you want to do as a coach, John Jenkins, I know what's going through his head right now. Listen, we, we've played terrible. We've had a bad night. It's the second game of the season. We've got to grow from this experience. This was a big game for us, and we didn't play up to capability. Now what we have to do is try to get ourselves back into another big game situation. McGuire. Just a nice downfield block, breaks the sideline, shoved out of bounds. Carroll Spencer threw him a fine block to get about 10 yards. John W. Brown shoved him out of bounds. Watch number 35, the inside receiver, make a block for Steve McGuire. Here he sets up, blocks Lorenzo Dixon. Steve McGuire gets outside, picks up real good yardage. And that's all you ask of a wide receiver, not to level somebody, just hit him. Get in his way. McGuire, 17 carries, 84 yards. He doesn't offer the, the blazing speed you usually see out of a Miami running back, but he's gotten the job done. Toretta rifles one, incomplete. Intended for Bird, who was checked in for the first time. Steve Harris on the coverage. Bird out of St. Petersburg. It's kind of interesting as you look at a run and shoot offense. You've got four receivers, and then you look at Gino Toretta and his Miami. They've really got three wide receivers in the ball game, but they have a tight end also in there, which makes it a little bit easier for him to run the football with Steve McGuire or Martin Patton. And it makes it a little easier for pass protection. You've got the extra guy in there to block. Second and ten. So with four wideouts this time, we put McGuire in motion and they'll throw to him. So Miami ball carriers, as running backs or receivers, have slipped so many tackles. Him. McGuire said he's been working on his moves. He didn't like to get hit all that much. Top ten, Florida State, Miami. This can do nothing but enhance their reputation. And of course, they always meet, and it's always a great game. Michigan, Washington, Penn State, which may have the best team Joe Paterno has had in a long while. Houston, ten. Well, that's not going to last. Not after tonight. And the Cougars were so helpful, so hopeful that they would come in here and be able to move up in the rankings, challenge for national championship. Toretta throws, incomplete, through low to Lamar Thomas. Dennis Erickson would like to see his team not only continue to play Florida State, he would like to play Florida and have a state championship. And with all the talent in this state, if you win the state championship, you've got a pretty good ball club. Usually if you win the state championship, you're national champion. That's right. But that is, with the schedule that those guys play, that's, that's tough to add another team of that caliber. Also tough for Florida in the Southeastern Conference with this expansion. Nearly blocked. Maybe partially blocked. End over end and we'll get the big Miami bounce. You're not surprised, are you? It goes to the 23. The Hurricanes, they've gotten a few breaks, but they've certainly made all the rest and have earned a 34 point lead. I'll be watching you on the Alabama-Florida game. It uh, should be a dandy from Gainesville. Looking forward to that. That's That will be an outstanding football game. Florida Field was always one of my favorite places. Great place to watch a football game. As is ESPN. We can slip that in. 4-12 to go third quarter. Cleaner takes over at his own 24. Miami leads Houston 37-3. The run and shoot has done neither tonight. Klinger under pressure throws the screen to God. Armstead hits him, and then he gets a lot of help as they get to the 30. Let's go to the studio and Chris Fowler. Chris? All right, fellas, if you think back to the last three games, Miami has become the worst nightmare for the Southwest Conference. Remember the Cotton Bowl, 46-3 over Texas. In their opener this year, 31-3 over Arkansas. It's now 37-3. Added up, it's 114-9. No touchdowns allowed. Some injured pride for Southwest Conference fans, fellas. Hey, Chris, if I'm an athletic director anywhere, I cross Miami right off that schedule. Klingler throws, sideline. Complete? No. 
Armstead was over there knocking the ball away. Klingler, the last three games he has played, two last year, including the bowl game against Arizona State in Tokyo, and the opening game this year, especially Arizona State. Look at that, 716 yards. And tonight, he has been held to 146 yards, or make it 153, 19 out of 40, and only six have been for more than 10 yards. A tribute to the Miami defense. Guy on the draw. Another flag is down. Guy slips the tackle. Gets it out near the 40-yard line. John Jenkins' play calling right now is the respect he has for the defensive line. And it has been that way for almost the last quarter. Both sides. Defense. This will go against Miami. Also, I think uh, what's got to be in his mind, protecting the quarterback. He's got a guy here who is... A legitimate Heisman Trophy candidate who has just been clobbered all night long. Well, he just can't he can't control the pass rush uh, any other way at this particular point. There's nothing for him. He, he can't really do anything. So it's run the draw, run the shovel draw, try to get quick passes off before they get to David Klingler. David Klingler's had a tough night. That is an understatement. And that's the reason, right? Oh, yeah. What they're looking at. That four-man rush has been withering. First and 10, Houston from the 39. Klingler to Good. Good gets out of bounds. Gained about five. Miami will feel good about those scout teams. That's the players who simulate the other team's offense. And they really, it's tough to do. It's tough to simulate the speed. But what Dennis Erickson did is he went back and worked against his own receivers a little bit because they had an extra time to prepare, and the extra time to prepare against this offense helps. Exactly. Ran his uh, first-team re receivers in skeleton drill. Game six on the last play, second and four. Klingler throwing off balance complete to Gilbert. And Gilbert up to about the 50. You can see the difference in the uh, confidence level of the Houston Cougars from the first half to this half. They have some plays that will work now against Miami, albeit for short yardage. And in the first half, they dropped a lot of balls. They looked a little shaky. When you play this offense, the key individual thing you want to do is keep them from getting big plays. And Miami's done that tonight. They haven't allowed them any big plays. 11 catches, 94 yards for Gilbert, who had 11 in the opener. Here's the screen. Sherman Smith made the wrong decision. Eric Miller. I mean, even their little scat back receivers with great speed are having trouble outrunning linebackers and defensive linemen. Well, Eric Miller kind of fell in this one. You see the pass rush. Now he just waits. He's coming back to you, Eric. Just stay right there. There you go. He'll come right back to you. <laughs> and that's the kind of night it's been for Houston. Eric, 6'4". 260, a senior. Palm Beach Gardens. And they have used two entirely different defensive lines, and they've both done a whale of a job. Klingler just can't find anybody this time. Side arms it. Nice pass to Good, and Good is belted. He got to the 47. To the sideline, Adrian Carston. Adrian. Mike Patrick with a couple of Cougar alums here. Carl Lewis to my right and Leroy Burrell to my left. Carl, is there any truth in the room you were offered a uh, uniform by Coach Jenkins at halftime? They can use your speed out there, right? Well, I'll put it down real quick. Um, they're, they're doing a good job. It's one of those games. The things happen like that, but they'll be back. Any eligibility left? No, no, it's long gone. <laughs> Leroy, Leroy will come back uh, with you in just a minute. Mike. All right. It's a good move by Carl Lewis. Yeah, turn the uniform down. Carl's very bright. He's no thanks. I don't want that uniform. Klingler. Got him again. Excellent coverage downfield. One of the few times the offensive line held and did its job, but the Miami secondary covered beautifully, and Eric Miller got there first. Excellent coverage. Too deep coverage by Miami. David Klingler's looking backside. He faked the front side route. He looked backside. Just everything covered. Just you just he just doesn't have any time to throw a deep route tonight. Five sacks. And on fourth and 16, Langston comes into punt. Daryl Spencer will do the return duties this time from the 15. 
returnable. Spencer from the 20. Only gets a couple this time. Back to Adrian Karsten on the sideline. Leroy, thanks very much, Mike. Leroy, uh, they said earlier in the week the defensive backs from Houston that they were running and practicing against 4-2 speed with their receivers, and they figured that they could handle Miami. Why aren't they able to get the job done with Miami speed today? Well, gosh, Miami's so fast. You know, it's hard for anybody. I don't know if I can keep up with those guys. Uh, they've got the experience and talent, and, you know, it's unfortunate, but U of H is a couple years away from being a national power, and, you know, I think we'll see it, you know, coming in the near future. Forget sprinting and long jumping for a minute. What would you like, what would, would you ever like to just put on the uniform and fly down the field about 50 yards and catch one of these balls from David? You know, you know it would be nice, but, uh, you know, I'm a sprinter now, and, and I enjoy what I do. I love it. And, uh, you know, maybe one of these days I will get out there, but, you know, I don't think right now. But I never had to catch you. Thanks very much. Mike. All right, Adrian, thanks. Pass complete. Punch drags Williams out of bounds at the 43-yard line and a little pushing and shoving. You know, the thing about those 100-meter uh, sprints, you don't get hit very much. That is the end of the third quarter. It has been all Miami. The Canes lead the Cougars 37-3. We have reached the three hour and 10 minute mark in this one and we have a full quarter to go from the Orange Bowl in Miami 37 to 3 and the Hurricanes have been impressive to say the least Coretta the quarterback McGuire goes to a win Coretta for a sideline incomplete in case you join us late, let's update you on the scoring summary for this one. Patton on a two-yard run made it seven to nothing. Lamar Thomas a two-yard two touchdown catch on a fine throw from Toretta, 14 to nothing. Williams from Toretta again, 21 nothing second quarter. It started to look bleak for Houston, but Roman Anderson finally got them on the board with a field goal. Then Lamar Thomas with a backbreaker, a 71-yard touchdown catch. And then Houston shot itself in the foot again, snapping the ball over the head of the punter for a safety. And Kevin Williams, 51-yard touchdown catch, has made it 37-3. Miami bidding for more here. Second and 10. Draw. Patton. Flag down. So Patton as he reaches the 46-yard line. Blunt made the tackle along with Kenny Perry, who's been very active tonight. And Gentry. Check the flag. Pauline. Offense. Boy, if the referees got paid by the penalty, there would be a rich crew tonight. John, he's got his own highlight film. He can take it home and show his family. <laughs> you know, one thing uh, Miami is very proud of, not only their great athletic ability and their winning record. Holding, holding, offense, still second down. The graduation rate last year was just about as good as it can possibly get. And they are also exceptionally proud of the fact that all of their players do community service work. Some do a great deal in the area of trying to prevent kids from drug abuse and staying in school. And Dennis Erickson says all of his scholarship players are required to do at least some of it, but many go out and volunteer on their own beyond that requirement. 256 yards in penalties, though. Toretta under pressure. You go to the sideline, Dr. Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, the last Thursday night game Miami played was Thanksgiving 1986. The quarterback's name was Toretta, and it was number 13, but it was Jeff Toretta. And Jeff, little brother's having the kind of night you had back in 86. Yeah, Gio's played real well tonight. I think uh, it's been a you know, total team effort, and uh, they blitzed him all night, and I think he's responded. Um, real proud of him. Klingler was uh, pretty much motivation for young brother, right? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, there was a lot of hype with uh, Klingler, you know, about the Heisman and all the rest, and I think uh, Miami's defense responded, and uh, it's not it was nice to see Gino play such a nice game tonight, and uh, we're, we're proud of him. In fact, uh, me and my brothers were probably more tired than Gino from high five and whooping and hollering in the uh, stands. Jeff Toretta, third and 25. Toretta deep sideline, too high for Kevin Williams, and Miami will have to punt it away, facing a fourth and 25. You know, two two other older brothers of Gino Toretta had played. Greg was a wide receiver at Cal Davis. Gary, a quarterback at St. Mary's of California, and then went on to coach Gino in high school. Houston came hard after the last punt, trying to make something happen. They show an eight-man front again. 
Jerry Parks is waiting back at the corner of the Parks has to backpedal all the way to the 32. And once again, Miami with excellent speed on special teams, and they always put a big hit on the return man. 13.21 to go. We've got a timeout. Did you know that the most valuable patent ever issued went to a small business owner, Alexander Graham Bell? Since then, AT&T has stayed on the cutting edge of communications. For example, AT&T just invented a new 800 service for small businesses. It uses your existing line and costs only $6 a month. At AT&T, almost half our business comes from small business. When you succeed, we succeed. Call about our 800 offer. PN's Thursday night CFA, Houston and Miami, is brought to you by Jeep. There's only one Jeep. And by MetLife. Get Met, it pays. You're watching CFA football on ESPN and watching Miami take Houston apart, 37-3, with 13-21 left in the game. Klingler stays in the quarterback. Good, and they'll stop the play. Yet another penalty flag. Check in with Chris Fowler. We'll check on the penalty in a moment. Okay, fellas, the pennant races are tightening up in the AL East. Boston draws within three and a half of the first place Blue Jays by beating the Yankees 7-2. Mike Greenwell drove in three, but the Tigers fall five and a half back. They are shut out by Milwaukee's Chris Basio. Sports Center follows the game with highlights and scores. Back down to Miami. When you shut out the Tigers, you shut out some bats. Those guys can flat crush it. But the Red Sox making a real run at the end of the season. Hope in New England springs eternal. They never give up. First and 15. Klingler gives it to Miles on the delay. He's across the 40 to the 42. And our Sunday night baseball, our exclusive coverage with John Miller and Joe Morgan will feature those Red Sox against the Yankees at 8 o'clock Eastern time. Hope you'll join us for that one. Mike, do you think Lee Corso is still watching this game? No. You don't want <laughs> Well, I, the reason I, I'll, I'll Lee's, be back to there is <laughs> he's in bed asleep. I give Lee more credit than that. Second and eight. Miles again on the delay. Close to a first down at the 49-yard line. Check in with Adrian Karsten. Adrian. Mike, a nice touch by the Big East officials this evening. If you look closely, you'll see a VS on their sleeve of their uniform. This is a memory rather, of a man named Vinny Scarzi, who was a Big East official who died August 21st this past summer. Been a referee, uh, graduate from Holy Cross in 1960. Uh, he's been uh, refereeing since then in small college, large college, a lot of bowls. Just a nice touch by the referees here this evening. Sure is. We had, I had Vince Scarzi in many games in... Uh talked about John Sophia. They really have a good crew in the East. Uh, and now, of course, they're the Big East Conference. So uh, always felt like it was good, well-officiated crew. And certainly the pride of the Big East right here, uh, the Miami Hurricanes, that was the linchpin to the whole uh, conference setup to have their power. They wanted to join it as a football conference but because it's also going to help them in basketball. Do you think there's somebody at the uh, Radisson Inn in Bristol still watch this game so I can get them to go wake me? Of course, I'll have to tell them I'm going to move Miami up into my top eight. Into your top eight? Yes. They weren't there a week ago, huh? No, I'm going to be honest. I thought they lost too many players. And, uh... Miles on the draw. They're trying to get the first down. Well, how good do you think they are now? I think they're good. I, and I'll tell you why I think they're good. The questions I had on Miami going in, and Dennis Erickson's team was, they lost so many defensive linemen that I felt they were going to be young in the defensive line. They didn't have a tackle like Jerome Brown or Cortez Kennedy or Russell Maryland. And, and offensively, there's, there was questions on Gino Toretta, but I think they've answered all these questions tonight. They have defensive linemen. They've got great team speed. Their receivers may be as good as any receivers they've ever had here, their collection of receivers. Gino Toretta passed the test tonight. McGuire and Patton give them two good running backs. Special teams, excellent, and they got a pretty good schedule. Well, speaking of their schedule, the biggest stumbling block there is number one Florida State waiting on the horizon. What do you think about that matchup? Well, I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think Casey Weldon also. I mean, I think he enters the, the picture a little bit too. more as a Heisman Trophy. I think the Heisman Trophy is wide open right now. I think David Klingers can still win it, but I think now every there'll be a lot more players involved in that fourth and you saw the length of a football to go 
This man will be back right there, John Jenkins. Oh, yeah. I guarantee you that. He'll bring his football team back. This is one loss. You have to remember that. You grow from a loss. Wouldn't want to play him next time. Klingler throws for it and has it to Gilbert. Fourth and a foot is a passing down in this offense. Every Southwest Conference team will be calling Miami tomorrow for this film, this tape. They better also try to get four of those linemen to transfer. Because <laughs> it's not the defense, it's the defenders. Anybody can line up in a 4-3, can't they? Oh, yeah, you can line up about anything. <laughs> Some of, sometimes you line them, you just guard the goal line. <laughs> It is a first down Houston ball at midfield. 11.45 to go in the game. Klingler gets it out to Gilbert. Just to the quality receiver takes it down to the 42-yard line. Darren Smith knocks him out of bounds. Gilbert's 13th catch tonight. Darren Smith credited with the tackle. Here's what Miami is uh, facing the rest of the season, and they have always done a very good job of spacing their big, big games. Uh, the next real big test, October 12th, Penn State. Great team this year. That should be one heck of a game. And then Florida State on November 16th. The other games, you figure they have to go in as, as real heavy favorites. Klingler sidearms this one incomplete. Watch Freddie Gilbert go down the field here. Now you watch the rerouting of receivers. Everybody's banging away at him. Oh. Matter of fact, they're actually tackling him there, Matt Britton. Matt Britton gave him a little forearm shiver to the side of the head. Britton, the senior from Miami. He's moved rather well on that bad knee. Third and a yard. Try to get him on the ground and don't. Number 34. May have lost the yard. Miles makes the handoff. Klingler has been under Fourth severe down. pressure ever since this game One began. The and there are the Fourth stats. Six sacks, nine hurries. He has not been intercepted. And surprisingly, only had one pass knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Game's not over yet. <laughs> you know that, I mean, everything else has went bad tonight. Fourth and now two. Klingler, 25 out of 47, 179 yards. Dumps it to Gilbert. They'll try to let him get the first down, and he can't. Paul White with a great ankle tackle. Exceptional tackling by Miami. Timeout, 10.49 to go. Miami continues to lead. 10.49 to go in the ballgame. Miami takes over at its own 42. We've had 79 passes thrown tonight. And it looks like we'll get to the four-hour mark without even uh, straining ourselves. Coretta remains at quarterback. This is McGuire. Good cutback. McGuire's got a chance. 30. Had the ball knocked away. But Miami will retain it. Darren Woods... Very nice looking play there. Not only did he make the stop, he was trying to make something happen by slapping at the ball. Steve McGuire, watch him. He's going to run the stretch play to the left side. Watch the cutback now. Cuts back. All the linebackers have overrun the play. Darren Woods, number five, catches up and then tries to strip him. He did, but the ball went out of bounds. McGuire, 18 for 118 yards. So he has 188 yards in two ball games so far. Another first down, Miami. Patton comes in at tailback, gets the carry. Hit in the backfield initially by Ryan McCoy. And then stopped by Glenn Cadrez. It's been a long time since this offense did not score a touchdown. In fact, it was the first game with Jack Pardee as the head coach. And John Jenkins is the offensive coordinator when they had the run and shoot installed. And it will happen just about that often, once every four years. You've got to play somebody like Miami to shut it down. Believe me, this offense, there's nothing wrong with this offense. Brilliantly conceived of the athletes they have. They're going to score a lot of points with it. A lot of people are going to play Miami and only get three no matter what they do. Patton on the screen. All the way down to the Cadrez hustling downfield again, playing very hard. 
Steve Harris makes the tackle with him. A little quick screen where Lamar Thomas, number 36, comes back in and blocks the linebacker. A little pick play again against man coverage. When you get people in man coverage, sometimes you can pick them. One thing in defense of the, of the Houston defensive unit, with the gambling style that they have, they know they're going to give up some points. Make big plays, give up big plays. They count on their offense to come back and get those scores back. When the offense can't do it, your defense will work. Well, where the offensive line from Houston had a problem tonight, the defensive backs had one also. Yeah. McGuire gets the first down, back to the sideline, and Jerry Punch. Guys, we approach the four-hour mark. Stamina could be a problem, but not necessarily for Miami. Now, they experimented before the Cotton Bowl last year with a carbohydrate loading solution called Gator Load, made by the same people who make Gatorade. We know what happened in the Cotton Bowl, and they are now firm believers in carbohydrate loading. They make the players drink two of these at lunch and two after the game. They believe it gives them unbelievable energy during the game, and after the game, it cuts down on some of those minor aches and pains because of the rapid energy restoration by this carbohydrate loading. Jerry, send two of them up here to us. <laughs> <laughs> send send six. The truck. <laughs> we'll take a six pack. <laughs> Mario Cristobal, the junior right tackle, is the injured player. He's the most versatile lineman on this uh, Miami Hurricane team. You know, this, uh, this club has had, in the last five years, 26 players drafted in the first three rounds. 26 guys in the first three rounds. Sun does twice as much as anybody else. Unbelievable. The level of talent they have had here is incredible. Hope you'll be with us uh, every Saturday. We'll give you stats like that. Will Chris Fowler and Lee Corso. And the ball starts at 11.30 Eastern. We have a doubleheader this Saturday for you. Louisville against Ohio State. That's at 12.30. And then at 7.30, Ron Franklin and Mike Godfrey will be at Florida Field in Gainesville, Alabama against Florida. First down, 10 Miami driving, trying to add to the score. Toretta throws and off the fingertips of Daryl Spencer. You were waiting for Sports Center. We have gone by our 11:30 window. Sports Center will follow Sermon tonight. Maybe somebody from Sports Center can get Lee Corso up so I can talk to him. No, Lee's uh, Lee figure he's got another hour for this nap. Oh, does he come back on tonight, Lee Carson? At this point, I'm not sure. <laughs> Second and ten. Boy, it has been all hurricanes. Just a marvelous performance by every unit they have, and the coaching staff as well. Toretta floats it to Patton, almost intercepted. Could have been picked off by Lorenzo Dixon. He would have gone 90 yards. It's been an almost night the whole way. Another quick screen where Lorenzo Dixon sees it, comes up to make the interception, just underplays it. He had nothing but green grass in front of him. Boy, you really got to take your hat off to the Miami coaches. I'll tell you, they've oh. had a great game plan. They've executed tonight. Dennis Erickson has to really be proud of what his staff has accomplished. You know what's really surprising about this game? No turnover. There was the one interception, but that was wiped out by a penalty. Toretta gets great protection again, throwing for the end zone, and Spencer can't get there. In fact, Spencer and Thomas were within a stride of each other, and that shouldn't happen. And there, you can get a little chuckle out of running the wrong pattern and running together when you're up 34-3. It's a little easier to go to the sideline. But somebody busted that pattern. Of course, we know one thing for sure. That coach is still going to yell at you, isn't he? Well, he'll find something wrong, <laughs> even though it's 37 to 3. Carlos Huerta on for the field goal, 29 yards. And in his career, Huerta is 96.4% inside 30. He just doesn't miss. 40 to 3, Miami, back in a moment. 35 to go from the Orange Bowl in Miami. Huerta with a weary leg kicking off again. Good from the four. 
they have crunched every return man tonight. Check in with Adrian again. Adrian. Well, Mike, I'll tell you what. No one really has to feel so sorry for David Klingler tonight. This is the Wilson 1001, the ball that Houston uses. Sent with hugs and kisses and handmade by his grandmother, Betty, at the Wilson Football Factory in Ohio. Now, i got a question for you. Does that mean that his ability is an indirect pro uh, result of a football factory? Adrian, do you know where that's where he? I wonder if he knows where that city is in Ohio that makes the footballs. I don't. I do. Fred does. Ada, Ohio. Ada. Klingler throws complete. Peters into the game for the first time. Uh, Houston uh, starting to rack up some passing yardage at this point, but this will be the least significant passing yardage. What are the coaches doing here? They're giving another blitz, another way to get to the quarterback. Hardly the seems fair. Yard. We want one more way to get to him. Klingler has gone the whole way at quarterback. He has DeAndre Sanders behind him. There's this one out. Got a man and overthrown by a yard. Marcus Grant was open. And Klingler very unhappy with himself Number for missing 81. that. One. Marcus Grant was the intended receiver. Hostel Miles will check into the Houston backfield. Always been interested in what a coach looks for at this point in the ball game. You're being mugged publicly on the road. Uh, you just trying to see if your kids still play hard. Well, you, there's always the next ball game, so you really are trying to still execute. You're still trying to find if you're going to make some replacements who you put in the game. Klingler trying to keep this drive going. It looks like he has another first down. Uh, Verlin Brown makes the catch. Good pass. Mike, Mike Houston's been on probation the last couple of years. They were 19 and three during that time with John Jenkins, and he's only got 62 players on scholarship. So, mm -hmm. really, there's a lot of teams, a lot of coaches. When you only have 62 players, you don't win. So they've been able to win through the probation. They've been able to recruit in the Southwest Conference. They've always been rated in the bottom three in recruiting. Yet the program has really come alive. And as I said, this is one game. This is a game to learn from. And he's very proud of his players and his coaches for the last two years. Everybody told me they didn't have anything to play for. Once again, double coverage, and Miami has done an exceptional job in its secondary. And they are eligible for a bowl game this year, and most certainly they'll be going to one. There's Donald Douglas out of Liberty, Texas, a very good athlete. He can move. He is uh, one of the three second-string quarterbacks on this team. And Jimmy Klingler has a good look at Douglas there. Jimmy Klingler, the younger brother of David, and Chandler Evans. And they like to rotate them one play at a time. So if Klingler comes out, we will see three fresh quarterbacks. So far, no indication that he would. Once again, brought down, flag down. Kevin Patrick with another sack. That's the third time he has gotten to Klingler tonight. Well, they said he was a good pass rusher. I think you can upgrade that. He's an exceptional pass rusher. Watch Kevin Patrick, top of your screen, beat the offensive tackle. Daryl Clapp just beats him inside, puts the pressure on David Klingler, brings him down. Calling for intentional grounding. The penalty against Houston for intentionally grounding. Third and 34. That's not the worst shape Houston's been in. They had a third and 54. Madeiras put pressure on Klingler. He's had to run for his life tonight. Madeiras missing. Klingler throws this one away. Well, if the last one was intentional grounding, what was that? All night, Rusty Madeiras has really crowded the football. You've talked about how it, sometimes he looks like he's offside. Yeah. But he crowds the football because he's able to beat the offensive tackle. He's just taking as much ground as he possibly can. Here, he beats John Morris. Charlie Williams. David Klingler outside. Watch the hit he takes after he throws the football. Oh. 
starting to question keeping Klingler in there. It is your franchise. That was Jonathan Harris returning the punt. Four-yard return after a punt of 51. Houston's schedule, they have to play at Illinois, then face a very good Baylor team. The rest of their schedule from there on, Southwest Conference games and Texas A&M, a team that has always given them trouble. Had Texas, the team that beat them a year ago, then Rice TCU and Texas Tech. Frank Costa has checked in as Miami's quarterback, the redshirt freshman out of Philadelphia. His nickname is Costa Verde. And they'll give it off. Number 23 is Larry Jones out of Pembroke Pines, Florida. Ryan McCoy makes the tackle. Very high on Costa. The coaches like him a lot. Uh, came out of Philadelphia high schools. When Brian Forte transferred to Rutgers, it gave him an opportunity. Now, he's behind a little bit because when they were having the quarterback battle, Gino Torello was getting some of the plays, and Brian Forte was getting some of them. Frank Costa wasn't getting any plays. Now, just in the last couple of weeks, he started to get some work, and they really like what they see in this young man. They do recruit some quarterbacks at Miami. Throws complete to Jones. He's across the 30 to the 32. That's Chris Jones out of West Palm Beach. Another redshirt freshman. The stats on Toretta. 365 yards, four touchdowns. That's not bad. Opening game, 297 yards, two touchdowns. So he's got six in two games and about 600 yards. It's going to be tough for him as a uh, as a relatively unknown junior to make any Heisman progress, but he certainly showed us the class that he has tonight. And Klingler cannot help but be hurt by this game, whether he he got terrible protection from his offensive line, but still the perception of what he was unable to do against Miami will certainly hurt him in the race. And that's unfortunate for him because he's a quality player. Miami's taken a few people out of that race early in seasons and late. Delay a game. Offense. Jerry Punch is working on another story at the sideline. Jerry? Guys, the latest graduate from quarterback U here at Miami is Craig Erickson. And Craig, you came down from Athens, Georgia tonight where you're a grad assistant and preparing for your upcoming game with Alabama. Now, you're going to be pretty impressed with your understudy here, Gino Toretta, tonight. Uh, he's done a real good job. He's done a lot of good things and he's made big plays when you need to make them. Uh, I didn't expect anything less, so he's a good quarterback. He's got a big year for him. We'll be back after this play. Third and ten for Frank Costa. Throws complete. Jones gets out and appears to have the first down. Let's go back to Jerry. Now, Craig, what's your status? You had a serious injury to your right knee during a practice for an All-Star game last year. You've had surgery. Where do you stand right now with rehab? Well, that's one of the reasons why I went to Athens. Um, I, I'm able to rehab up there, and uh, I'm on a schedule. I'm on the field every day throwing the football, and my arm feels good, and I'm staying in. So the only thing is I'm not taking snaps behind the center. But uh, things are going well. We've got a young team. We're making strides, and, uh, you know, it's Air Georgia from here on out, I guess. Air Georgia, they beat LSU last week, guys, and they got Alabama coming up in about a week and a half. Oh, Air uh, Georgia has a strange sound to it, doesn't it? That's right. I want to know how he got out of cutting up film tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Coaching is not an eight-hour day. <laughs> Little screen. Nice block and a flag down. They're going to call that one a clip. Pass is complete. Number three, Jonathan Harris. Heavily markers are down. The block was by A.C. Tellison. This is real close. A.C. Now it's clip. Yeah, he got his helmet. Got his helmet in front. It's close. Well, that's always the key to that penalty. If you get the hat in front of the player, they're not supposed to call it a clip. I think they're arguing with the official down there. The Miami coaches are letting him know that they think they made a mistake. A lot of penalties tonight. Oh, both teams. Well, we're gaining on four hours. We only have about uh, 18 minutes to go, and the clock shows 4.54. You didn't tell the cab to keep the meter running, did you? No, I don't have that much money. 
440 to go in the game. First and 34. Try to run it a little bit and give it off to Larry Jones, the freshman. You, you want to... Larry Jones. One of the questions you talked about, what you try to find, and you got a lot of young players in there now, but Ryan McCoy on that last play, the starting middle linebacker, number 44, still came through and almost made the play. So you, you still look for somebody like that who's still going to play hard at the end. And, uh, as I said before, it's, it's a learning experience for this ball club. They're a young team, and uh, they'll be back in this kind of situation. He's played hard the entire game. It's a good linebacker. Melvin Robertson told me that he's one of the best linebackers he's ever had. Melvin's been around for a long time and has some great linebackers. He was Southwest Conference newcomer of the year ago as a freshman. Donnell Bennett out of Fort Lauderdale gets his first carry. The freshman run out of bounds at the 24-yard line. Nigel Ventress made the tackle. will transfer from LSU. Game day, noon Eastern. And we will update you on everything. And I mean everything that's going to happen in pro football on any given Sunday and then everybody's back at seven o'clock for prime time highlights of all the ball games. Wonder how these guys are doing the NFL. Might win a couple. Wait a couple years to get them in. Here's the penalty story. Three hundred and fourteen yards. Third and twenty four now for Miami. Swing it out in the flat. Bennett fighting off tackles, running very, very hard, and finally swarmed as he got to the 25-yard line. Even though there's 300 yards in penalties, it's been a pretty Number clean 30. football game. Yes, it has. Yeah, there hasn't been any, you know, I just think both teams, there have been fouls, but they've been errors rather than somebody trying to start something. And the coaches have to be very proud of the Miami players because they have had the rap and uh, certainly they have earned a great deal of it uh, for the taunting and displays they've had over the years. But they have been on their best behavior tonight. They have done nothing that would uh, bring any shame on them or the coaches of the university. And Dennis Erickson says he has a bunch of real good kids and he doesn't want anybody to have that perception of them because he says it's not true. They're good people. Well, Charles Farms had an interesting point the other day. He said the pressure, he saw the pressure put on Dennis Erickson. And just, they all just felt like it's something that had to stop. And uh, coaches asked him to do it, and they were going to stop. Well, it shows the control that they have. And players, is he taunting there, that <laughs> mascot? I don't know what he's doing. I'm sure his, his mom and dad are proud, though. What is it, about uh, $8,000 a semester down here? Under three minutes to go. And what a performance by Miami. They have just been tremendous. Klingler staying in at quarterback. Miles on the delay. Picks up about 11 into Miami territory. I sell Miles out of Denver, Colorado. Junior college transfer. Klingler will sleep very well going home. He'll probably be covered with ice. He's had a rough night. Every area, just a tremendous pass rush. Flips out the quick completion to the 40-yard line to Marcus Grant. Dexter Siegler out of Avon Park, Florida, makes the tackle. Made the stop. The winners well, smile and the losers, excuse me, the losers are just, uh, they got to wait till next time. Boy, it's, uh, I know how disappointed uh, Houston has to be and how elated Toretta and Miami have to be. Uh, Houston came in here with such expectations. Tenth ranked in the country with a high octane offense that uh, would score points in bunches. That almost intercepted by Siegler. Was the intended receiver keeps, keeps getting worse. Siegler. Been that kind of night for the Houston Cougars. 152 left in this one. Miami dominated from the opening whistle. They never let Houston really have a shot. That four-man pass rush 
has just been tremendous. This is Miles on the draw. Skidding inside the 20. Harris Harris out of Memphis, Tennessee. The backup free safety made the tackle. There's their outstanding offensive lineman. Searcy playing with a broken hand. And now the what is left of 71,000 in the Orange Bowl. Wanting that Miami defense to hold. They don't want to see Houston get the touchdown. Klingler throws in a hurry, and once again, the catch made by Fred Gilbert, and then he is sandwiched in a hurry. Paul White, number four, hit him first. Derek Golden also in the recovery. Paul White was supposed to be the nickel defensive back tonight, but they didn't need him. And, uh, they played it with just a base defense. Clock running, 57 seconds to go. Klingler changes the play. Klingler looks exhausted. Shovel pass intended for Miles incomplete. Let's go to Jerry Punch. Jerry? Guys, no one was more embarrassed about what happened in the Cotton Bowl last year than head coach Dennis Erickson. He said it would be a different 1991 football team than indeed it is. They are up 40 to 3. No taunting, no showboating, no pointing the finger. Indeed, Erickson promised we would win with dignity, and indeed they are, guys. You got that right, Jerry, and they uh, they don't like the fact that the new taunting rule is uh, is tabbed the Miami rule. They think it's terribly unfair. But they won't have to worry about it if they act the way they did tonight. Gilbert again. Trying to use that one-on-one -on -one speed, but here come three more defenders. They swarm you like crazy. Derek Golden on the stop. Just a great job of keeping him pinned in until help arrives. Gary Gold, nice play. And now the fans are going to boo Houston because they've taken a timeout with 26 seconds to go. We'll be back at the Orange Bowl in just a moment. Six seconds left on the clock. Houston desperately wanting to get in the end zone. Miami desperately trying to keep them out. Sports Center is next. We've had 95 passes in this game. I think Bobby Douglas, the old quarterback of the Chicago Bears, went one full year without throwing 95. The Hurricane trying to get the fans to their feet, and they've succeeded. Fourth and six for Klingler. Draw, Miles. He's got the first down at the seven. And they will stop the clock again. Makes the stop for I guess right now you're watching a, a battle of pride with 20 seconds left. Hardly, uh, certainly not going to make any difference in the outcome, but Houston wants in. Klingler throws complete to the one dive touchdown. Marcus Grant got in there, and there is a. Uh, the celebration, which should draw one of those new taunting fouls, and that's probably the reason for the smile on Dennis Erickson's face. The officials' arms are tired. They're not going to yeah. throw another flag. I think they're out of flags, too. But this is one thing you can't do, uh, an orchestrated celebration. David Klinger had some time. Roman Anderson will come on for the first time since he kicked a field goal to try to add the point after. And Anderson puts it through. He is 11 for 11 and has 124 straight. And here's the celebration dance. Three seconds remain. The University of Miami Hurricanes 40 on the Cougars Houston 10. Well, I don't know if I'd be out there celebrating that much when uh, when you've been lumped the way they have tonight, 40 to 10. Here's the rule. No player or substitute uh, can use language, gestures, engage in any acts that provoke ill will or are demeaning to the image of the game, including pointing the finger, hand, arm, or ball at an opponent, baiting an opponent, or enticing an opponent or spectators in any other way, and the dance falls within the categories of those. The key to enforcement is to determine if it's prolonged or predetermined this is both. <laughs> I 
I tell you, I was, I've was i been in a lot of games where I got killed this bad, and I didn't feel like celebrating no matter what went well. Yeah, it's just it's time to load up the bus, load save the, the equipment, go on home. 96. The bus driver had a time limit. He was gone an hour ago. Have to walk to the Miami airport. Mercifully, three seconds left to go on the clock. Hats off to Miami. They have been superb. And they're expecting an onside kick. For what reason would you do this? Miami will recover. And that's the ball game. Tonight's final score, the University of Miami Miami with a sensational, dominating performance. Our final score, Miami 40, Houston 10. For Mike Gottfried, Jerry Ponch, Adrian Carson, and our whole crew, this is Mike Patrick. Good night from Miami Sports Center is next.